gorgeous. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the August 25th, uh, August 2020 edition of Let's Fix Your WordPress site. This is a WordPress Toronto meetup. My name is Alex Sirota. I want to first apologize to everybody for last Tuesday's meeting. I um, accidentally uh, wasn't able to notify you all. I had an urgent thing I had to get to with a client, and unfortunately, I didn't have an opportunity to even assign a co-host. So a lot of people were waiting for me, and I it's very uncharacteristic of me to do that. So I think that's actually the first time that's ever happened in multiple years I've been hosting it. So I do apologize, and I wanted to make it up to you by uh, by uh, hosting it the Tuesday after the last Tuesday. And I see that lots of people have joined, which is great. Um, so what we do at this meetup is we um, review any comments that were left on the meetup site uh, and if the people are here then we will answer that question and if they're not uh, we don't address questions for um, that were posted on the meetup for people that aren't here because there's some other people that might have uh, an answer so um we're going to start with uh andy andy are you here because uh, andy asked about fixing the website and it looks like uh, some, some people are responding to Andy on Meetup, and so hopefully you'll get some help. I don't think he's here. Kathy, you are next on this list. Kathy, are you there? I'm here. Hey, Kathy. Um, so, Kathy, you're asking, you'd like to know if anyone has experience with integrating MLS listings on a WordPress site. Um, and Patrick said there are multiple plugins for this. And uh, you're saying, uh, <laughs> If there's a plugin, how much work is involved? It's very complicated. They may charge up to fifteen hundred dollars to integrate. Um, it would be all good to offer realtors. So, Kathy, can you describe first of all what MLS is for people that uh, don't know, of, uh, and then also tell us what you would like the plugin to do? Okay. Um, well, if you ever go on a site like Realtor.ca, you'll see. Um, a search window where you can search different properties by different search criteria. You could do it by price or uh, location or number of bedrooms or whatever. So the, the fee comes from different uh, real estate boards. And so the agents that I was working for, um, they're licensed under the Toronto Real Estate Board. And what, actually, to get the fee to come in, you've got to fill out a bunch of forms. You have to be a licensed realtor to, to be able to do it. And uh, so we, we went through the process. Uh, and what I didn't know was that what we get from the Toronto Real Estate Board for these listings is just raw data. So somehow, um, we needed to integrate that. Um, and I, I wasn't sure whether a plugin, how well a plugin works, because the research I did, like looking at different sites, um, there's different services like IDX, but you pay a monthly fee and the agent didn't want to pay the monthly fee. Um, and then I talked to different developers and as I mentioned in, in my uh, comments there, quite expensive. I mean, they want about $1,500 minimum to do the, the programming for that. So I'm just wondering about uh, the plugin. And I know it's, you know, it's gotta be a lot of work because there's a lot of different types of queries you have to set up um, because people want to search by different criteria. There's also, it also brings up maps and different things. So I don't know, I'm just wondering if anybody's had any experience and whether it's worth pursuing or just too much of a headache. Kathy, I've had some experience with um, uh, MLS and, and the APIs behind it. <clears throat> and it was about two, two and a half years ago. And the complexity uh, in part arose out of the, just the difficulty of dealing with the MLS people um, and just you know the technology exchange sort of issue of, did, did we understand what they needed? Did they understand what we were providing? And so once that paperwork sort of got done, then that was sort of like a, real headache put aside. I found that the plugins that um, 
were the most suitable were the ones from Americans uh, or American developers because they had set up their plugins to be essentially agnostic to the to the multiple listing service in question because they wanted to sell the product in every state of the US. So it's quite easy for them to come to Ontario and treat it just like another state. And therein lies a, a big part of the cost is that these plugins are quite sophisticated in part because of the search process they're supporting, but in part because they support so many different systems. Um, the other thing that to bear in mind, I think, apart from the question of the plugins and the APIs, is that there, I noticed that there was quite a well-developed sort of industry of developers supporting uh, real estate sites, whether it was a brokerage, an agent, a federation of brokerages, or what have you. And so many of them, or at least, you know, there were dozens, it seemed, that offered turnkey packages, uh, you know, a fixed amount each month depending on the tier for the services you wanted. And one or more of the tiers would include the MLS service as a component of it. And so they really seem to turn that into a well-packaged, well-thought-out, systematic approach to this question of a real estate business. And since many brokerages and agents essentially have the same business model, that lends itself to a sort of a mass production technique on the part of developers who have 10 or 15 or 20 different website designs and can turn out a broker site, you know, within the hour, so to speak. Um, so that's, that's the big competition in my mind, unless you're building a sort of a custom hand built site uh, with a designer, then you're competing against these American outfits that, um, that have been in business for five to 10 years and um, and seem to be doing a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. uh, just to uh, uh, underline that, uh, Robin, uh, I sold uh, uh, my parents' place uh, using a service similar to what you just described. And uh, basically what they did is they gave you a monthly rate as, uh, and it was relatively, uh, you know, $50, $60. It wasn't that much, but that's six years ago and uh, uh, they gave you connections into the MLS and so forth, and the cost in terms of uh, uh, a fee for uh, property sold was minimal. And so uh, definitely look in, instead of getting direct MLS from uh, one of the websites, unless you absolutely need to create your own uh, uh, total service, uh, look into uh, what Robin suggests. So, can I understand, Kathy? Um, I think the ant. I think we kind of got off track there in terms of, kind of a little bit off track of. You're on the connecting buyers to sellers. You're not. You're not necessarily. Uh, like what Jacques said is like you're. He's looking to cut out the real estate agent, right? right. right. So you, you you don't want to be cut out, right? You want to be in there, right? Your yeah. client wants to have the real estate agent, right? Yeah, so, so she she is a broker agent. Right. Um, yeah, she she needs needs the flexibility to get as much information from the LMS. M, sorry, MLS. Um, the other thing I found out was that you don't you need to also connect to various boards because there's the MLS for Treps, which is the Toronto Real Estate Board, is only one service, and then you have to go approach the other areas and go through paperwork with them and get it a whole different feed as well. So I don't know, it just seems probably like I'm answering my own question. I think it's probably not worth pursuing anymore. I, I, I think the question is, what are you trying to accomplish by having MLS listings on your particular broker's website that you can't just link to properties that they're interested in selling on the official MLS site? Like, is that, are you trying to attract customers by having MLS listings on your, on that particular website? Like what's the, yeah, what's, that, what's that, the that, business objective? That, that's what she wants. She wants them to be able to, to view um, properties more than just what, what they're listing. So if there's another, if there's a property that they're interested in, the agent can, you know, approach. And is, and is the thinking that somebody will Google an address and it will take them directly to that website? No. It, well, 
I, uh, so, so this was my first experience with the client from hell. Uh, we actually got into a screaming match last night uh, over this site because um, she, she talked me down from, it's a very simple site, but she talked me down from uh, $1,200 to $600 for a custom WordPress site and logos. Okay. So, um, and then, and then told me she wasn't getting enough from me because right. everybody, every other real estate agent has MLS listings on their site. So why couldn't I do it? It's, it's obviously very easy if everybody else has it. Right. So she should just go to that real estate agent that has it and say, who did the, the work for them, right? <laughs> right. Which is what I was doing. Yeah. I was, I was researching it just because I felt, um, you know, I, I just wanted to understand myself so I could make a, a valid argument for it. But there is all sorts of technical wizardry and mumbo jumbo that you can actually throw it. Let me give you one example. You can frame in an MLS.ca webpage and, and just create an iframe on the site and say, there's your listing. Boom, done. Um, Title page, have an iframe, image source, or the source of the iframe is MLS.ca. Finish, done. There's, there's two things that militate against that, uh, Alex. Number one, this is a regulated profession and the regulators are quite conscious of their monopoly. And so therefore scraping sites will earn you a quick wrap in the knuckles and soon after a suspension. I'm not, I'm not uh, I hear you, but I'm not suggesting- I'm just saying that, that would be kind of an obvious go around. Then the second point is that oh. you'd need a database of the listings and at least the GTA if that was your market because people searching neighborhood would want to see what was available, not you know what you'd sort of scrape one in 10 and not updated for two weeks. So right, 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 no, I understand. There's that but, issue. But, but I think there's a, there's a question of value, the value proposition. So like, if, if does she want to import automatically every neighborhood into the website and have a searchable, basically an alternative MLS system for a subset of the listings, in which case MLS costs multi-million dollars to build. So like, to, to, to Robin's point, uh, if you're gonna, if you think you're gonna make tens of thousands of dollars in commission, $1,500 investment is negligible. But that's the, that's the big if. Are you? Like, well, actually, I mean, you think about what real estate agents do for a living, um, $1,500 is a drop in the bucket when you consider what it costs to support, say, one house showing on a Saturday afternoon. Exactly. It's estimated by agents to be somewhere around $300, $350 just to put it on a Saturday afternoon show for a house. And so if you have two of those on a weekend, uh, and that's just one property. Hopefully you have more than one property. But I think the situation in, with real estate agents is very similar to the, the situation with lawyers and architects and other professionals. They're just really cheap. And they, they, they look around and they think that, oh, well, look, I can go to this U.S. firm and for two thirty nine dollars a month, you know, I'll they'll produce a site for me, you know, in 15 minutes. Um, that's, as, you, as we all know, is if that's what you're competing against, then you have to have a pretty compelling argument for why either your budget approach or your sort of customizing approach is better than that from their point of view. So the, data is what you're, the data is what you're paying for. Not only paying for the plugin, you're paying for the data and that, and that relationship that we're built. And I would run away from this client as fast as possible and don't even do the $600 deal. You are gonna be very sorry. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, oh, hi, Dale. <laughs> Dale knows this story already, but, uh, you know, just- I'm, just I'm agreeing with Alex on this one. I already said that. <laughs> um, you know, just from a personal standpoint, like I, I want to finish off. I want to be, you know, really professional and say, okay, I finished the job. Here it is as much as I can do. You know, here are your options, you know, go pursue them. If you think somebody's going to do this for you for free, good luck. Uh, the other thing she said to me is, oh, you know, she could do it herself, but she doesn't have time, which is a joke. It's not, it's not, that's, I see that she's not being professional to you. You want to be, you be professional yeah. to her, but that's not a professional thing to say, but, right? Yeah, but you know what, I, I'm not going to go to her level. Oh, well, that's why I'm saying you should, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, no, you, I, you will, the reason why I say you'll be sorry is that this client will be asking for free stuff until, until, until the end of time. I yeah, promise you this. You may not get paid. And you may not get paid. And you will say, oh, that Let's will be- Let's not make it too depressing. 
No, but, but I've, 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 I've heard of the situation before. Yeah. I've seen this in lots of situations where when somebody says, when they don't value the underlying sort of complexity of what's involved with an MLS system that runs on your site, and they think that $1,500 is too much for that, that's, it's actually probably $15,000 to build that. $1,500 is a drop. Like, it's actually great value if you can actually pull that off. Because you've got to probably find a plugin that does the, the data part. You may have find plugins that allow you to search and do all that, but the data flow into that is what she's looking for. And that's not going to come for free. Yeah. Why so, don't you just put a, a link on there to the MLS site and say, there you go. So, yeah, what I, what I ended up doing was I put a link to, so she's associated with a brokerage firm, a large brokerage firm, and, um, but she wanted her, her own personal brand. Um, so this is why she came to me for website and logo. But what I ended up doing was I put a link to the, it's actually Keller Williams is, is the brokerage firm she's associated with. So I put a link to there so they can go directly to, to that site and, and type in whatever they want. They'll get the searches, the complete MLS. So here's, I just did a quick Google. I don't know if you found this article. This is called five WordPress plugins for real estate listings, IDX MLS. This was published, mind you, almost a decade ago. So honestly, I take that with a grain of salt what's actually written here. But, but the point is that there are solutions and you know, they are probably built by organizations that specialize in this. And therefore, you, know, you could subcontract to one of these organizations and get a quote, say, hey, I've gotten a quote for, you for three organizations. I'm happy to co you know, collaborate or you can go to them and you can get, you can get uh, uh, a realistic view of what's involved in this kind of stuff. No, I did that. I, I got three, uh, I did get three quotes and they were all about, about you know, they said from a thousand to 1500 minimum. And um, she told me that she wasn't willing to pay more than $200. <laughs> you have to do this at a loss, right? You know. Here's a plugin called MLS Import, uh, and uh, this plugin. Let's just. I'm just curious to see how it's priced at. It's probably it's ninety nine dollar one time fee, right? So, but but the question is, how do you get the data into it, right? Like I've never used this plugin, but have you have you looked at something like this? I, yes, I did look at a couple of plugins. The other thing is, like when they, it's, so it's U.S. dollars, but. Yeah. Um, it's per year, right? So you, I don't think it's, 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 uh, oh, this is a month to month. Uh-huh. That's what it is. Yeah. $99 one time fee, but then there's a, there's a, looks like there's a month to month price. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, they have to support the data flow. Yeah. That makes sense, right? Yeah. It, it's, it's really a complicated process and you, you, and you need that support because things will change the, sure. the data stream may change and, mm -hmm. and. You can't, I don't think you can do just a one-time thing and expect it to keep working for you. Because of the, yeah, it's a data flow. But this is a $99 one-time fee, but there's something hidden in terms of the ongoing price. Like there's something. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is, I've come across this before because there is a setup fee plus oh. there's a monthly rate. Right, right, right. Another thing to take into account, I think, that if you actually do get into this and, and, and get the data feed is that searching is not a simple, straightforward thing. And many people just take whatever the default sort of template is for how you display listings. I found that by working with that layout and the organization information and the way people search, you can add some real value that people recognize quite quickly because when people start looking, you know, shopping for a home, start that whole process, they sample fairly widely as a rule. And so they're sensitive to sort of who has tools that make this job less difficult and stressful. So if you are in the business of providing search-based information, then the way you go about it can be a real advantage if you take to heart sort of the question of, well, how do people search? How should I organize this to the best end result? And not just assume that it's whatever everyone else is doing is, is likely to be the best. That, that just isn't the case. Anyone else, anyone else have any um, input or feedback? Anyone else dealt with MLS plugin? 
Sorry? Has anyone else dealt with MLS plugins? For this kind of specific um, real estate um, work? Okay. I guess the answer is really leave it to the people that are good at it and have, <laughs> are doing it, you know, as well, a, I mean, you know, that's their sole source is real estate agents, I guess. Yeah, like organizations like this MLS import, like for example, and then you get a pretty good idea of what, what the capabilities are. And then of course you want to make sure that it supports, it's supported in Canada too, right? So. Mm -hmm. There, yeah, like you, you set it up and then something goes wrong and you have to try to troubleshoot it. It's, it, it's a, a risk. big it, hit. It, it's a risk involved and it's really one of these things where there's a lot of unknowns and uh, um, if you have never done it before, then then that's your guinea pig client, right? So to some extent, like if you're willing to just do it on a break even without any profit or even, then, you know, find some solutions and do it. Then at least you but Alex, don't Alex, don't you want to do that with a client that seems to appreciate you to some extent? I mean, nothing's worse Absolutely. than sort of giving work away and the client sort of berates you in the process. I mean, that's like double Absolutely. damn. Absolutely, because then they'll say, "Well, why doesn't it do this and why doesn't it do that?" And so yeah. you're you're doing an exploration, really, a discovery process, and you want somebody that wants to learn along with you, right? And and if you're not charging a lot for it, then you're not really making any money per se. You're you're, you're kind of like doing research and development almost to kind of see like what works for them. So yeah, you want somebody very collaborative and otherwise it's just going to be really difficult. Yeah. And, and I, you know what, I'm, I'm, sorry. I'm cool with not making money to learn something new, but um, I'm not cool with being taken advantage of and, and being berated. I think that's not, not cool at all. So. And, and if I, it seems to me that if you know that now, this is the time to pull out. So, but, but Kathy, if you're interested in like knitting, becoming a niche in, inside of this area, it's worth it to just do the research on your own and set up your own site and, and explore some of these solutions that are available just to get an idea of what's really involved, right? What are the real costs? What is, so that if you ever talk to another real estate agent, or you, you may say, look, I can't do this right now. I'm going to do my own research, I'm going to set something up, and then you can come to them and say, look, Here's what I'm going to charge you for because it could be a more of a turnkey for yourself. Uh, meaning that once you know the ins and outs and have a selected plugin that you want to use and you're confident in using, then you can reuse it. And I'll give you an example of something I recently did with a client where we used an ad system called Ad Rotator Pro. I've used it several times now, in multiple clients. I know kind of what it does. It allows you to manage an advertisement system that you sell ads yourself. So you put your own ads in, you put your own graphics and text and it allows you to place ads on different pages. And, and I kind of knew what was involved. So I knew that, um, um, uh, I knew I could recommend this and I knew how much it costs and I knew what the support is like. And I was very comfortable in saying this is really straightforward to install and configure. And even then there was a surprise, right? There was a surprise in the sense they introduced a way to do dynamic scrolling ads. They didn't have this feature before, the client wanted to use it, we kind of had to learn on the fly a little bit about what's involved, but it wasn't like a Pandora's box. It wasn't like completely new. There's some, some added features since I used it last time. So, um. Yeah, I, I can definitely see the, and, and that's kind of the avenue that I was thinking, you know, it, it's a, it's a good experience to learn, even if there's nothing made off of this. Um, I just think it's, it, it's probably not worth, worth the effort. There's, there's other work to be had out there that's, and, and I don't want to experience any, any more real estate agents, I think. <laughs> you know, and, and the other thing is like, because they're associated with, with these uh, larger brokerage firms, they're paying a, a big fee to these firms because they're also getting from them all their marketing. They're getting a CRM and they're getting, you know, apps and all this. So they're paying a lot of fees to them that's why they don't want to spend a lot of money for their own custom site yeah, the only area that uh, you can do for realtor is uh, specialized stuff like uh, a video or a gallery uh, for a showing and, and it's very specific 
you're going to, that's what you're going to do. It's going to put it up on their side and bang, you're done. Good, Oak. We're going to move on. Um, the next question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, that's great. I just wanted to thank everybody. That was, that was a good discussion. Good stuff. Thanks for asking the questions. A good question. Let us know how it make out. You can join again in the next future meetup on how it happens. Okay. Um, uh, Fern, are you here? Yes. Um, yes, I am. So you have a question uh, about optimizing images, review the method we talked about? Well, yeah. Um, you know, I, I've, I've had other projects in the last few months. I haven't been able to. What I need to do is I need to find the original images of my, my website. My, my website is now reduced, so there's not as many photos there now, which is great. And even a couple of pages were gone, were gone now, so that's good too. It's been simplified. So. Um, I just, I've been, I have been uh, playing around with the stuff we talked about a few months ago and it's, it's not working out. I'll just show you, I'll, I'll take a raw photo right now. Um, like, uh, let's see. You want to share your screen? You can show yeah, I, do, I, I am. Do you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, so here's a raw photo. It took me a while to find something raw because that web developer already reduced, he already reduced the photos. So a lot of the photos I've just found are um, are like two megs. <sighs> a lot of them that are in the website, but you know my website is too slow, and that's why I need to do this. Um, so I'm just trying to get this into Photoshop. Interesting. I will be doing a uh, meetup on. How do you know that's the cause? Uh, sorry. How do you know that's the cause of? How do you know that's the cause of your website being too slow? Oh no, I don't. Um, I think we did some uh, that. We did that G metrics testing or something. Okay. Um. So I don't know. Um, I don't know, but a lot of these photos are like one point two megs. I, I kind of took a look, but I, I want to go over that save to web thing again, because I can't seem to, anyway, I don't know why this is not going to Photoshop. What's wrong? I can't drop this into, I'll, I'll do another one. I'll, this is a stock photo. I'm dealing, I got a lot of stock photos from okay. Adobe. So, so can you open up your website and your computer? I'm just most curious to see what when you okay, save. In, in a stack, in, 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 yes, I can do that. But um, this is a, um, I've been doing a lot of, new stock photos that I'm going to put in different places. So here's the stock photo. And if you look at the, um, if you look at the image size, this is what I want to learn how to do when it's already a very big size. So yeah. not, not when my web developer already produced them, but before he did. So this is quite large. And, you know, um, I played around with, you know, where you save it to web, but it's not everything moves. So. Well, one sec. I mean, what, Jack, you, you must know this. I mean, what is a, an optimal size for an image for a, a hero type of header? What, what are we looking at as the largest it need be? Because this looks 50% too large. Yes. It, 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 and that's roughly right. There's two things that you want to do on images. First, you want to crop to the, uh, maximum size that you need uh, and uh, for a hero image it's about 2000 by 1280 for a desktop and it can be slightly larger for uh, uh, other uh, uh, like laptops that have uh, uh, video capabilities but now the second thing you want to do is you want to uh, reduce the size of the image using uh, compressive, uh, loss, loss, lee, loss less or loss E compression. And those can really save a, as much as reducing the size of the image in terms of uh, resizing. Not, not uh, image, uh, well, the thing is, what, last time a few months ago, we looked at this save for web. And that's sort of the classical way to do it. Right. And so I just- No, no but wait it. a sec, before you're going to, deal with the compression, which is yeah. the save to web. Yeah. You want to reduce the size of the image. Yes, you're right. Oh. Height and width to the appropriate right. one for your site's use. 
And unless it's going to be used as a header or a hero image, uh, this is like three to four times larger than it need be. So before you compress it, you want to have an appropriate size larger than the actual size in a given page, but not as big as the stock images tend to be. Okay, um, well, th this won't... Uh, and then I guess the other thing is, is this JPEG or PNG? I think it's a JPEG. Right. Uh, uh, now, I'm not sure, but I think compression can be a little different between JPEG and... Oh, it's a PNG. PNG. So, you know, yeah, I personally that. use PNG whenever I have the chance and I convert off as often as not and then compress the PNG. Right. Well, let, let's, let's see what it is. Here it is. It's a JPEG here. Right. But you could open it up in Photoshop, convert it to PNG, resize it to the appropriate dimensions, right. then compress it using, you know, like an, like an 80 level out of 100 or more. Uh, right. to, to get a lot of compression out of it because okay so um, I'd like to learn how to do this because there's it, I, what about optimizer uh, optimizer um, uh, press or something I mean there's another one what what are you recommending that I use to compress them well I mean Jack you, you would know but is there anything better than Photoshop at just compressing an image uh, that it's Photoshop handled? is actually quite good uh, uh, well, but, I'm very, I'm familiar with Photoshop, so maybe we can just save to web and do it that way. Just, just, uh, just uh, use. You have to use the web save, not the regular save too. And, and the other uh, thing is that you could keep a version of the image after it's resized. That's right. To run yeah. through an online compressor, and right. then compare that to the word exactly. to the uh, Photoshop version. And okay. you'll quickly see whether or not it's worth the extra effort of going online. <laughs> well, okay. And do, do you, what, what is the name of an online compressor that you recommend? Well, just, just go online and look for online image compression. Uh, Marsh. And there's one that I particularly like, uh, which goes by the name of T-P-N-G. So it's P-N-G preceded with a capital T. So just okay. tpng.com, I think it is. Right. And it, nothing could be simpler. Drag and drop pick your compression level. Uh, you, in my case, it's the only service I could find that was free, good quality, and you could do up to 20 images at a time with a five okay. megabyte per image limit. And then okay, you can so download them all in a, in a zip file and quickly sort of, you know, do 20 images at a time. That's, that's okay, good so, uh, Okay, so this is, what is the compression level then? I don't know what that would be. Uh, Depends. Uh, PNG, I'm not, I'm not going to use it as a hero image, just, just one of the images on the pages of the website, just any. Okay. So first you, you're going to crop it as Robin recommends. So that would get it down to about 2000 by uh, uh, 1200 or so. Okay, so stop right there. Fern, do you know how to do that? Uh, yeah, oh. but I'd like, to, I'd like to just do it with you. Okay, so go ahead and do the crop. Let's do a crop now. Yeah. We're doing a lot of talking, but not a lot of doing. So go ahead and do a crop. Okay. So, but you have to see the image. So they have to see the image size, though. Like you can't just crop it. You have to see the image size. Well, you're crop. You're changing the image size when you crop, right? Yeah. But I, I, I know. But I'm trying to get the image size up. Do you oh, want to keep the? Uh, just start cropping, and you'll see the the numbers. Uh, just. Uh, Wiggle any of those yeah, dotted yeah, lines yeah, and the, the yeah, number yeah. will pop up telling you what the details are. Okay, well, just, just, just wait. So here's the image size. Okay. So now, we'll do if it I, right there. If we're right here? Yeah, right there. Yeah. In that okay, but I wouldn't want to switch to metric. Yeah. yeah. You, you metric would be much easier. To pixels uh, per inch and. Uh, well, that, that, so you mean, that's where I'm lost right here is I see, I, I see pixels up here and you can't change these. All right. So you're, you're switching the document size. So you switch by percentage. You can say, I want to switch it by half the size. So you switch to percent under inches, switch to percent. Okay. Well, last, last time we did save to web and you could do no, it. Right no, 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 because we're doing okay. something. Okay, okay. You're not getting what's being discussed here, Fern. Let's okay. reiterate. You're changing the overall size of the image. Literally, right. like imagine a piece of paper. Your piece of paper is 12 inches by 7 inches. It needs to be like 2 inches by 4 inches or something. Like okay. That. Did you understand what I just said, Fern? Uh, yeah. Do you mean percent here? Is that what you sure. want? Sure. 
percent, sure. Okay, so, so now I'm just, okay, so now yeah. what? So reduce it by 30 percent. So I have 30 for width and 30 for height. Oh, I see. So, oh, but that, but it's not percent. Oh, is it percentage there? Okay, yeah. sorry, go ahead. Thirty. Okay, and 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 the resolution could be seventy-two pixels per inch. Right, uh, that that I understand. But that must be a tremendous part of the fatness of the file is in that resolution. Well, it's twenty-three point six megabyte file right now. But I mean, yeah. uh, how would I 72. know? Seventy-two. Seventy-two. Oh, I did. I did. I put seventy-two. Okay. okay. Click OK. Now the image size oh, it didn't uh, fall uh, it drop i'm surprised why did it increase it why did it this increase is what it? happens it keeps changing on me and it's, it's just you know if you're not a photoshop expert it's really a nightmare could i say something i this uh, is melroy yeah. melroy go ahead sorry i'm late uh, i'll help her out can you do control z me? Can, 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 cancel this and do control z oh okay cancel this again okay. what about this i can cancel yeah, this just do control z yeah escape for that to go away, just do escape. Control Z, I'm on a yeah. Mac. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. I'm Mac and PC also, don't worry. Okay, just go to f uh, file, export. Well, well I, I cropped it there. It has to be cropped. It won't let you go. Take, you off, take crop. off the crap. Take off the crop. Um, yeah, so now you take off that. Go out of that mode. Uh, just do escape. Hit escape on your, on your Mac. One more time. Uh, Okay. Uh, Welcome to Photoshop. Okay, now so go to file. Go to, go to file. <laughs> go to file. So that export will come on. I need that export to come on. Yeah, I know. What's so, going on with your computer, Fern? Not, not really. We, no, we don't worry. Don't worry. It could be because that's a stock image and there may be some the, special limitations. Uh, no, 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 no. Don't worry. Because it's, it's an don't, Adobe. Don't come. There we are. Product, so now you're fine. Adobe. No, the best thing is just, just, take, just open take it that again. photo again. Okay? Just open it again. There's so many people talking and I just get overwhelmed. No problem. Don't worry. in a different mode. I got you. Yeah. If we There's start no fresh with, with this expert person here, okay. maybe. Okay. So uh, just your crop marks have come on again. huh? So just try again. Say file, export. Okay. Export. There we are. So do, uh, oh, you got Zoomify there. Okay, automate. Just sorry. Fine. Oh, sorry, sorry. Just Export. try the, 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 last one, the last one. The Zoomify. Zoomify. Yeah. I just want to see that. Yeah, I know because I don't know what that means. Oh, okay, you don't have something here. Cancel. One second. Cancel. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's something else there. Just go file. I think again. That's probably for background images. Uh, Why not just use save as? Save for web. Save for yeah, we, web. We did that last time, and it's, it's yeah. quite complex. It should bring up another screen. Format, yeah, this is, this is fine. Way. This is fine. This is what I wanted. So yeah. now uh, click on that picture and do command zero. You mean click on the picture right here? Yeah, yeah. yeah just do command zero now. Command zero. There we go. Now just go to the top right hand corner that GIF, what you want the format to be, you're doing for the web. So do, um, do, do JPEG. What, well, so, I guess just a JPEG. It's just going into a website eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that top right hand corner, you see that GIF, change that drop down to JPEG. Oh yeah, that yeah. I know, that I remember. Okay, and okay. This, uh, that uh, now you want it as least as much in the left hand corner of this image, you'll see the amount of mega, the, the size of the file. So as we change it, that's going to drop how you want it, okay? So I guess you want this total image. You don't want to crop it, correct? I'd rather keep this whole image for, the, just for in the middle so, of a page on a website, yes. Uh, that quality, we want it still the same. It's currently now at 1.2 megabytes. That's pretty high. So... Um, um, in, that's that's interesting. Where, where do you see 1.2 megabytes? Where do you your, see In your left corner. hand corner of your yeah. screen, of the image. Right there. Oh, yeah. All of you are in the way. Okay. There. Okay. 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 Yes. I, <laughs> no, I, just, no, no problem. I just wanted to say, uh, what, I got a whole bunch of new photos from Adobe.com. Gorgeous photos, Adobe.com. I, I finally see choices. Okay. Because you know, okay. I'm very fussy about that. And all of they give you, they give you, let's they're focus, all 1.21 megabytes. Burn, let's focus. Let's yeah. focus, Burn. Fun, fun. So at the below the small gray square on your right, there's a width and height, we're going to change that. So just go and backspace the top one. No, 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 right down below the square, the small gray square on your right. right. Hand side. 
Yeah, below that you see the little image size. You see that left yes. the three six yes. seven one. What do you want your size to be in measurement? Oh, I, I, uh, you mean in, in inches? Or? No, it's in pixels. So let's do let's do six forty or maybe. Let's do 2,000 by 1,280. 2,000 is still a lot. I don't well, think no, so. I don't, I, this is not going to be a hero image. Okay. okay. So then just do about 640. Yeah. Okay. So the, the width would be what? 640. Let's say. Just to say it'll change. I think you've got that little thing on. It'll so be down it'll to change about automatically. 50 by the time yeah. finished. Now just hit your tab button. Hit your tab key. Tab? Oh, really? I'll never remember that. There, there you go. So that's your... Current size, look at what it's dropped to. It's dropped to 53K now. To how many K? 53, 53. kilobytes from no, one. No, no, that, but that, I want, I want at least a standard for, for web, for web, which is one. Oh, yeah. it's 53 about. kilobytes. It's like half a second. Yeah. A quarter of a second for it, it shows you. It shows you there on a slow modem at 56K modem, it's going to load at 10 seconds. You've got all the Wi-Fi and but high DSL. I That's only to, if you live in, in in deep Africa where there's no internet connection. No, I, I, I want it to be a three by three inch a three by three inch photo on the page of a website. A oh, that's not the actual size. I think that's you have to use the preview do, button do, down do, on the left, no, no, no. Corner, left bottom corner. Just, just do command zero again. You'll get the actual size. Yeah. So it's still good enough. It's it's quite sharp because this thing is meant only for web. So. Oh. I like I like the resolution, but that's too big for uh, on the middle of a web page. So what you do is know the website in case it comes with a template and it has preview images inside, like gray images. You can right click it and save those images, and then you can it'll tell you what's the size of those images. That size you can change it over here when you get it. But six forty right. is pretty big if it's just a. Oh, okay, small, I thought I thought I think these actually we've over compressed. If you look at the lapel on the woman's jacket or the outline of the guy to her right in the background, we've compressed too much. No, but that's because that it's been zoomed in. That's on no, purpose. they're all blurry. The they're they're blurry. supposed to be blurry. That's, yeah. that's stock images. They're supposed are to be blurry? Images. Yeah, she's uh, in focus. Yeah, yeah. The lady's in focus. The rest is all blurred out. That's correct. Uh, that's, she's that's, so that's not in very good okay, focus. For, so go ahead say, okay, let's go ahead and save this and take a look at this. So and, uh, you can do, go ahead and save it. You can do save. And then it'll ask you to what to name it. So you can rename it so you don't spoil your original. Okay. Yeah. So down at the bottom, right hand corner down, you have the save blue button. And then, yeah. So now you rename that file name. Okay. I'll just say, um, uh, edit it. Uh, okay. Oh, no. That's fine. That's good enough. I don't want to waste time with all that. So No, that's fine. So there you go. That will be your save. If you come back with the new images, at least you know what to do. Okay. Um, well, I'm not going to keep everyone today. What is your name? Can I can what? I can I speak to you after or something? Uh, yeah, try just uh, Melroy. And uh, you what you want my email or something? Or okay, your email's <laughs> fine. Sure. Melroy18 at gmail dot com. I'm so, a little uh, bit more in the night. Actually, I was just calling to see. I may have to take my son out just now. So, I'll just so how do you spell idea. your name, Melroy? How do you spell it? One, 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 one second. Now, uh, for in one second. Yeah. yeah. Melroy could also put his email in the chat for you. At the That's bottom. That's true. That's true. Yes. That way you can just copy and paste it. That might help. Okay. That way you can email yes, back. Fern. It's, so, yeah. It's Kathy. You you can call me later if you want. Okay, sure, right. I will. I, I have your phone number, but I don't have Melroy's. It's so right. how, how do you spell Melroy? M-E-L-R-O-Y. 18. No, M-E-L-R-O-Y and uh, 18 at Gmail. And take my cell if you want. I come home a little later by nine or something. I work very really oh. late. So you okay, can always... So uh, what's your cell phone? Call. Yes, go six ahead. 647. Four, yeah. 294. 294. 6616. Six six one six. So that's yeah. six four seven two nine four six six one six. Yes, thank you. And then I'll find out more about who you are. I mean, no I problem. Yeah. I, I don't know call who you to are. Think I wanted actually to text Alex, but uh, he's busy, so I sent him a message. Anyway. Okay, this way thank I won't you. hold up the whole show. No problem. Today, no problem. Okay. <laughs> I'll rush, you guys. Now, thank you all so much. Uh, just something. Thank is good. Take care. Thank you. I'll stop sharing. <laughs> Okay. Who's that? Who else has questions? So I think we run we run out of stuff on the website. 
Um, I came a little late to the party, like uh, meetup wise. Um, I have a, actually a couple questions. I'm an, I think an end user. Um, and so like I have a personal blog, like a blog. And I just had a um, couple questions about a plugin that like appeared on our site through WordPress. Um, it's called the VAF Press Post Formats UI. And we didn't, because I have a partner, we didn't download it and we have no idea where it came from, but it says it's a required plugin. <laughs> and you have somebody else that works on your site? Like I have a partner because we're doing this on our set by ourselves. Does anyone else have administrative access to your site? Um, I don't think so. No, well, do, you, do you think so or do you know Okay, so? no. Well, have no, you no, looked at your users? Have, has, have you looked at your user access. directory and see if there's any other administrative users that can log in? There are not. I just looked. Well, the only way that plugin could be installed is if something else installed it that you installed, like a theme. Or, or your site has been uh, compromised with malware. Okay, so you, so no one knows, like no one's, uh, no one's come across this plugin before, because I can't what's find the, it. What's the name of the plugin again? Would you the, give us the name again? Uh, it's called VA Press uh, Post Formats UI. And is that all one word? Uh, VA Press is one word, and then posts. For post formats and then UI at the end. Post formats. VAF post format. VAF press post format UI. I was just wondering if anyone had come across it. Well, it's unanimous. <laughs> hmm? It's unanimous. Nobody's come across it. I Googled it. I did find something, not too much. I don't. I don't actually see it. I don't see that it's an actual, like, official plugin in the repo. So. Well, there is a plugin by that name. Okay. What's the, what's the link? Used to have more media options for your posts, such as gallery posts, audio posts. You need to be in the post editor to use it. Okay. Uh, this doesn't sound like an add-in for some other plugin or like a must use or what's the other one do something or other. Uh, this looks like a standalone, sounds like a standalone plugin that you would install or someone would install whether you want it or not, but, but it's not an adjunct to something else. Okay. If, I'll ask the if we've got the right thing. See if they, they maybe added it with the update or whatever. Have you tried deactivating it? See what happens. Oh, um, we, yeah nothing like i didn't we didn't notice a difference like we didn't even notice it was there um so the and it's website. currently not active so it, and the website's working fine so mm -hmm. i'll just uh, keep, I'll keep it off and on and then once you uh once uh once if you checked your site everything is working as you expect and you can delete it and then change your passwords to your administrative accounts right because it shouldn't uh, plugins don't appear by themselves without being installed somehow Okay, well, thank you for your help. That's, that's everything. <coughs> yeah, who else has got questions? Hi, I have a question. I was just trying to unmute myself. It's Natalie. Hey, Natalie. Hi. Um, so I'm used to using WordPress.com. Um, where I created two websites on there, but I was recommended to work, use WordPress.org um, for a not-for-profit organization that I recently created. So I haven't used WordPress.org before, so it's very new to me. And I was it was recommended that I try SiteGround, which I have, have tried it. And so the website is technically up and running, but there are a few things because it's very new to me, um, WordPress.org, because I'm used to the .com one. So uh, there's a few things that I'm having issues with, especially the pages. I'm trying to add like um, sub menus underneath the primary headers or the primary menus, and I'm not sure how to do that or delete the blog pictures. So um, I, could, I can actually put the website in the blog and then you know if you guys want to look at it or in yeah go ahead and share your screen so while you're doing that i'll go ahead and share your screen and then we'll, we'll take we'll go through it so the okay, difference so between should, I just, should yep. I just share the screen instead okay yep um 
So WordPress.com is the hosting service that Automatic provides for WordPress sites. You can have a free site or you can start paying for custom domains and plugin installations. So it's kind of a host, it's a hosting provider, just like SiteGround, except it's run by the company that actually makes uh, and supports WordPress Automatic. So technically, you don't really have anything different by going to SiteGround except for you have complete control and ownership of the code that you've installed there meaning that you've installed WordPress.org, which is not really, it's WordPress that you've installed. .org is just the, the domain name that it runs under to download your own version of WordPress and install it anywhere. So any host, there's thousands of hosts and you have complete control. It means you have to back it up, you have to maintain it. WordPress.com, they do that for you and so it's a little bit more constrained as to what you can do on purpose because they wanna make sure that you're delivering a very particular kind of experience. But they, but basically the functionality is very similar. Oh, okay. I'm right? just gonna, I'm just closing a few things to make sure that I can get to the right screen to actually share the screen. Just give me okay. one. Second. So that's. Okay. I, I don't know. I guess maybe I found. I'm finding maybe because I've been. I think the first time I used WordPress.com was 2017 or 18. I don't know. I've been using it for a while now. So you're used to. It. I get, yeah. So it's. I'm very used to it actually. So I'm. I've. I was able to navigate myself through, um, I guess, what I have downloaded.org and downloaded the template, um, well, the theme. So I'm able to do that. So I'll just try to share the screen now and see if I can actually get to it because I was working on a few other things. So just let me see if I can get to it now. Sorry, just one second. Okay. Oh, <clears throat> I'm trying to just find. <clears throat> oh, okay. Okay, I'll have to close a few things because I'm just trying to find it. Let's see, screen. Okay, let me, I'll just go to, can you see the screen? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so this is where I am. So I've kind of, I was able to get myself this far. Um, so it's pretty much getting there, getting through it. I did find it, as I said, I do find WordPress.com a bit easier, but for example, so from the blogs right here, from the theme that I'm using, I can't delete these pictures. Well, those, um, are, those are probably featured images for those blog posts. Oh. So let's go to the so, one of those blog posts under post. Okay, so I did see the featured image. So does that mean I have to, because I found that somewhere. Let's see how I found it. So it'll should I just- of, It'd be part of the post. Yeah, you can just click on the post and then click add as post. And then after, I think I added this as a background. I, okay. That's probably that, the well, background. Let's just focus on one thing at a time. So click edit post at the top. And there should be a featured image there. Yeah, it's at the side because I did see the featured image. But so it's right down here. Let's see if mm -hmm. I can find it again. It should be on the right side, actually. Under. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is going on here? Is this edit? Is this the, this is block editor, right? Or no? Um, this is actually block editor. yeah. So it is here the featured image because I was actually just in the featured image. Um, so here it is right here. No, but that that's that's the preview for Yoast. Oh, I think uh, if I click on here, it brings me to featured image. I did figure it out. Um, no, I did have it today. It was on here. It was on the right hand side somewhere. Yeah, exactly. So it was here today. Um, let's see how I got there. I did get there today. So hold on one sec. Because I was able to get there today. So I did see that featured image and I did click on the featured image, but when I clicked on it, it didn't give me the option to actually um, delete the featured image. Right, so, you, you, so that's not the right place for it. Because oh, every featured image in the default editor. Sorry, can I ask you a question? Um, yeah. Did you install all these plugins to make it look like this, Elementor and all this other stuff? Or does that come with a the theme? It 
came with the theme and I changed it. So I, so basically everything, I just basically, this was a theme and I just moved things around mm -hmm. um, to, based on my preference. Um, I've I lost, I've right. lost visibility to where your standard document and block content is on the right side. I don't think I had, so how I do the edits, I basically click here. This is where I start for my edits. So it has, for example, it's using, when I click here, the Elementor. No, so wait, use, I, right here, mm -hmm. this is what it uses for oh, but edits. I, okay, but hold on a second. Let's go back to data related to Black Boys. Let's go back to edit there. And I, I don't want to leave that page yet. I'm trying to find where your featured image settings are. Yeah. And I, I and this is, it's completely lost now. I have no idea where it is. What is happening here? Is that Yoast SEO on the right, like overriding the? Uh, yeah. Can you can you put the X next to Yoast SEO on the right side? Right here. Yeah. Okay. So where? Where is the? Oh no. Uh, <clears throat> this is uh, the uh, the Yoast SEO. Is it in this list? Yeah, come on. No. Twitter I love, scripts. I love when the basic yeah. editor stuff is just totally tied back. Unbelievable. Yeah, I don't see Alex, it. Um, do you see the switch to draft uh, link okay. uh, towards the top, just slightly on the right hand side? Yeah. Okay. What happens with that? When I click that, it actually shows well. It, let's see goes to the draft. <laughs> I mean, you should be able to edit a post without unpublishing it, shouldn't you? Oh, yeah, I can edit the post. That's not a problem because I did edit the post, but it's a picture that I can't get rid of. Um, I, so I, I did, the post is all my information, so. Okay, yeah, but we're, what we're trying to do is just get a normal looking UI for <laughs> editing a post, right? Because yeah. usually there's a button or rather a drop down or a, rather a field on the right sidebar towards the bottom that's the featured image selection there i'm going to show you, i'm going to show you what a normal i'm going to i'm going to stop, I'm going to stop your sharing i'm going to stop your sharing i'm going to show you a normal okay. editor okay so um i'm in i'm in a uh, a blog post here same like you right mm -hmm. don't have elementor installed on the right side on every block editor post and page there's a document tab like this, and there's a featured image icon here that you can remove and replace and add a new one at any point in time. This and is what I want you to find. That's okay, in so the block I, will work on, I will work on finding that because I actually just, I did have it. I don't know how I got to it, to be honest with you, because I was just like, but I did have it. I did see it today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go back. Let's go back to your. Well, I know, but I got to tell you something that you got stuff installed there that's going to make your job a lot harder to maintain because you got all uh, you got very basic stuff that's been moved around, changed. So go ahead and share your screen again, and we're going to see if we can turn it on with the gear in the upper right corner. So the only thing I really moved around was like the pictures. No, no, that's no, all no, 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 oh. no, 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 no. You've got. Element, you've got all kinds of other plugins installed oh, well sorry. beyond your standard WordPress.org install, oh, right? Okay. So it's it. so let's go back to that editor. Let's go back mm -hmm. to that editor, edit post, and click the little gear uh, next to H51100. So did I do edit with Elementor? No. Oh. Click, okay. click the little gear with, uh, uh, here, I'm going to annotate this right here, that. That's it. There we go. Okay. Now let's There's document. Okay. So uh, scroll down. Right there. There it is. Oh. That's okay. how you, you want to remove the image. If you click remove featured image, it will remove yeah, the no, image. When I watch, so when I watch, so that's what I have to do. Okay. So I can just oh, go Alex, here. What did, what didn't, what did you have to do to get there? The gear has to be turned on in the upper the right corner. The little, the little gear. The gear was turned off by default. It, whatever plugin. Oh, the settings, the settings gear. Yeah, whatever. Right. Well, I know what's happening here. Some plugin or plugins are by default hijacking the editor, turning off settings, replacing it with their own UI, and then all the natural stuff is gone. This is this is like my worst nightmare. Right. 
This is my worst fear of, of what these editors are doing to go at the block editor. They're basically hijacking your experience to the block editor and they're turning off. You, you turn, go ahead and click that again and uh, you'll see that it's, it's Oh, gone. I see it's gone, okay. Right, and so then something else was there by default when we loaded it. <laughs> but this experience right here, the document and block is related to the block editor. So a post by default, you're not using the block editor here because you're not even, uh, or you are using it because in this case, you can edit with Elementor, but the featured image settings are under the, the document tab on the right side there. Right. Okay. Okay. All right, that will work. So I guess my question is, um, when I go to the website and I scroll down, why does it show on the home page? Like, so if why I go, why does what show on the home page? The blog. So the blog, the way how it shows when I click on the blog itself. Okay. So let's go there. Actually, if I, I don't know if it will show, but when I hit the site, if I just lie, right here. So, okay. So on the home page, you've got uh, it looks like content where you've inserted a, a part of the blog in there. Okay. So. So, so, you're at, you're so I'm going to, I'll change that. I'm going to change these pictures now that I know how to do that. But yeah. when I go, for example, I'm just going to, sorry. So let's go to, so I'm going to click on the blog. And so this is my blog. So do I have to change, do I have to remove this background picture for, because this is how it shows, like. Yeah, that's not gonna be readable. Uh, but you can use an overlay to uh, uh, make the, uh, the portion that's uh, uh, the copy there. Uh, you, you put a white overlay in and it, it make it semi-transparent and it's much more Visible and uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that because you're 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 blocking faces of people. That's not a good strategy. I, I would yeah. I just removed a background image. It's not an appropriate background image. You've got pictures of people in the in the blog post, and then you've got another pictures of people in the background, and it's and it's kind of it, you're you're blocking that lady's face on the right hand side. Yeah, and it's just it's, not that does not artistic uh, presentation in order to respectful of people's faces. I mean like. <laughs> you should basically just remove the background picture then. I think so. Or, or replace it with something that's a lot more subdued and not, not uh, like with a, with a pattern or maybe some sort of a, a different color. But really, you don't want to kind of create contrast like this where you've got text and a featured image and another what I would call a large featured image behind it. Yeah. You want to have some, some ability for people to read the content though, right? Oh, yes. Agree. I was just having that to figure background out image. You could make you could take down the opacity and, and make it like very, very much like very um, like you could do like a 10 or 15 percent opacity. So the people are still going to be there, it's just they're not going to be co conflicting with the text that above it, right? You could do that, yeah, or uh, uh, change the focus uh, so it's slightly out of focus. You could do that. Yeah. But, I, but I, I don't know, I don't, I'm not crazy about having people as background images. No, I'll just change the background image. I was just, I think I was just trying to figure out, because as I mentioned, I am familiar with wordpress.com and I've been using it for years. Yeah. Um, but for this not-for-profit, um, it was recommended maybe to go to use it, this. Did you build this site or did you inherit taking over managing? Oh no, I built it. I, I worked on it. Okay. So, yeah. so, so good. Yeah, you're, I tried. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're familiar with all the technology you've installed here, which is normally not available at WordPress.com. Um, I'm not really familiar. I just, to be honest, I'm like self-taught because I have, I do have another website. I just, I just use, watch a lot of YouTube videos and try to figure it out. I actually. Right. So you, have like, you have Elementor on here. You have a page. Yeah, I do. I, yes. Mm -hmm. so that's a big piece of the difference between this and WordPress.com. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't have Elementor on the other on my WordPress.com at all. You, can, you can't install it on there. Yeah, because that, it costs a lot. Yeah, you have to install a business oh, yeah. account to install plugins. So basically, what you've got is complete flexibility to add or remove any tens of thousands of pieces of technology for the site. WordPress.com is a lot more restrictive. As a result, mm -hmm. you have a, a small, smaller amount of flexibility, but you also may not 
put yourself in a position where you're not things are happening that you don't expect, right? So you've got yeah. to kind of uh, you know, you know. Mm. Okay. So but, I guess if um I had one more question, um, because I I added pages to the website and I wanted the pages to be like a drop down menu. Um, but when I went to add the pages as a sub, I think I did a sub menu or a sub category. Uh -huh. I didn't, I didn't see the option. And again, I'm going based on my experience of wordpress.com where I actually am able to like, just basically add the pages as drop down yeah. menus. Yeah. Yeah, so good. because this is new for me, um, I didn't really see that when I went and I was doing like, and when I was adding the pages, you're trying, the pages to, are there. you're trying to change that. Who are we Join the cause uh, that menu right there? Um, so the who are we menu is trying to do a drop down to say the vision mission statement. So so when you click on it, it would have like a drop down another menu that says vision and mission statement. So go to the upper left where you were just just now under LG Legacy Impact Foundation and go to menus. This is the menu editor for the whole website. So here it is mission and vision. Okay. So this is and so, created. okay, one second. So there's a couple of menus you have here. You have a menu called Mission and Vision, and then if you scroll to the top, please, uh, you will see that there are multiple menus that you have here. So if you drop, if you select that drop down there, uh, you will see that you have lots of other menus, and your main menu is your primary menu. You should select that one, and then click the Select button. So that tell, that's first of all selects which menu you're editing. Here's the menu that you're actually editing on the top page. And this is the menu okay. that you're going to manage by putting stuff into it. Okay. So now if you want to add a page, you click on view all, view all your pages. Okay. And then after that, which page do you want to add? So I wanted to add the vision and mission statement under we are. Uh, mission and vision. So there's a published page called Mission and Vision. Uh, yeah, it was. Well, I added this one. This is the one I I did this myself. I added that one as yeah, a second. This is not the menu that's at the top of the website. No. So I wanted to add it as a second, like as a drop down menu under who so, we are. Can you so? But but is there a page called Mission and Vision? Do you have uh, an actual page called Mission and Vision? No, I don't think I created it. I know I, ah. so what I maybe did, I didn't create it. I think I created the menu. I created it as a menu. I didn't create it probably as a page. Right, so so this, is a, this is a really good question. Like the menu is an abstract thing. It's not a real document. It's just a okay. configuration. Okay. And it's used to add menus to the website at the top, at the bottom, on the right. And so when you create a menu, you have to put something into the menu. So you need to create a page called Mission and Vision, and then it will show up on this list here. And then you can click on it, click Add to Menu, and then it will show up here. And you okay. can actually move it around. So for example, I created Programs as a menu. Uh, the programs is a page. These are all pages, okay. you see that? Okay, so sorry, I created Programs as a page. Yes. So I just, how do I add it now over here? So I just click, do I do this? Yep. And then add to menu. Uh huh. Perfect. Oh, oh that's great. And now, save menu. Oh, that's save. perfect. Okay. Did you also want to make uh, uh, subcategories in the yes, way the menu works? Yeah. Do you know how to do that? Um, no, not really. It was just going to go on YouTube. <laughs> Let's move. Like, so let's move. just drag the item and let's say latest stories. Oh, so I think you just drag like, that to the right. Just pick any one that you want to. Basically, you're going to indent the entry under the list in the middle under menu structure. Oh, move okay. to the right. Move to the move okay. to the right. Yeah, and any one of those other than the first one, I guess. Uh, now I haven't done a menu in like six months. Is, is it still just drag it to the right to indent it? Mm -hmm. Oh, so I would guys. basically just take it and un un indent it underneath, right? Just I would drag it to the right. Yes, it should oh. stay there. But I think the second one will. 
you have to have something to indent too, right? Now, okay, okay now it should hold. Go ahead. Let go. Oh, I see. Perfect. Okay. And then you can do the latest shows can be there or can be indented under the one you just did, or it can be indented again to be another subcategory and endlessly onwards. But obviously, the fewer indents, the better. Or yeah. Okay. Give it, does, you see how it changed the sub item? Yeah. Yes, it did. Yeah. So that's a sub item under who are we? You want to okay. see what this menu looks like now? Yes. Yeah, so I just go to. No, 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 you got to save it. No. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you gotta save your work. This is the gotcha. And they see you see this. It says menu updated. Yes. Name, which is the name of this menu, been updated. Oh, by the way, I, I as I started using WordPress, I I I've shown a lot more respect for these boxes here. I want you to pay attention to this box here. This this is a very subtle piece of uh, 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 feedback which appears and you almost miss it, but. I would highly recommend that you monitor on every page this kind of box that appears with a green line or a red line next to it. Because inevitably, it's WordPress telling you that whatever you did actually has happened or not. Okay. It didn't happen. A lot of people disregard this and then they go and do something and they think, oh, well, how come it didn't change? It's because there was a, probably an error or something that was uh, uh, appeared here. And this, this happens on a lot of screens in WordPress. So anyway, okay, let's look at your site. Oh, perfect. That's exactly, oh, okay. Isn't that great? Yeah, that's great. So this was saying, it's a, this one, I don't know, maybe because I'm not used to it, but I am finding it a bit more complicated, but this is perfect because I was able to do this in WordPress.com with ease. It's, but it's, it's much more powerful and it's much more complicated at the same time. Yes. Okay. You're, you're That's correct. perfect. You're correct All right. That. Thank you. That was very helpful. Now I can work with that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Cool. And I'm I, glad I we can help somebody to, today. <laughs> yeah. I know how to change it. Don't worry. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. You can just drag it out and you can add posts and custom links and anything you want to the menu system. It doesn't even have to be in your website. You can okay. add link. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Madam. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Um, anybody else have a question? Who wants to see a really cool WordPress site? I, I have a question. Ah, um, cool. I have a blog, a personal blog, uh, and I have a little issue about the captions that I'm putting in uh, the image gallery. So, yeah. you know, the captions. So when mm -hmm. I am working, um, you know, on the draft, they come out well. But in the actual blog, when you see it, it's uh, kind of, uh, it's not aligned. It, so I just want to know if, yeah, I don't, yeah. I, so I just want to know, is this something to do with the theme? Or am I doing something wrong? It, it's something to do with the what? The theme. The theme itself that I'm using. Oh, yes, for sure. Yes, for sure. For sure, absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about captions and media and media stuff. So pictures and files in your media library have metadata, which is like the caption is information that's added to the picture. This mm -hmm. metadata is stored in the database and then themes choose to mm -hmm. number one, show what pieces of metadata are gonna appear. And right. then secondly, how it's decorated, how it's actually aligned and, and what, what size it is and what color and everything like that. And so, first of all, captions don't have to be shown on a theme, but if the theme supports showing captions, then it will decorate it exactly how it feels. Feels okay. like doing basic, because a theme is a piece of software. A theme right. is, is code in your website that renders okay. all your content, your post pages and any metadata, as well as custom post types in a very particular way. Right, okay. So, let's look at your site and see if we can change the way your captions are. Thank you, so I'm gonna share my screen. Mm -hmm. Good question, by the way. Uh, okay. So this is um, this is the draft. So as you can see in the photograph, uh, it comes out all right. Within the photograph, the caption is okay. Did you add the caption right here in this uh, editor, yeah. or did you, oh, you added it here? Not yeah, in the I added, No, should I have done it? 
you know, no, no, show, show us how you did it. Show us how you added the caption. So I just did, uh, and then it says I can just add the caption. And this is what is this block? What's what's the name of this block? Is this a media library? This is a media. This it's is a a, an image. It's like an image gallery. Is it is it a standard block with with uh, media or is this a custom block? No, no, it's a. Uh, I don't know. The gallery block. Okay. It's a gallery block. Uh, yeah, okay. it's a gallery, cool. gallery block. Good stuff. Okay. I just typed it in here, yep. and it looks okay. Mm -hmm. But if you see it on my blog itself, mm -hmm. so it gets strange. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not. There's like this gray little. Uh, band right at the end, the edge of the photograph, the lower edge of the photograph. That's weird. The image. And then, you know, the, the writing is not aligned. Yeah, the writing is definitely different, no doubt. Okay, well, it's just something is happening in, in the theme. Anybody have any ideas on how to fix this? I would, um, I'm thinking that the gray part is the um, background of that box. I wouldn't use those boxes. I'd go into the media library and caption the photos there. Okay, I'll do that then. Right. That's, so, one, that's one brute force way of thinking it, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I don't mind doing that. It's all right. I, I don't mind that as long as it looks okay. But the block editor is, is falling down on you. I like the block editor and it's not... It's not meeting your expectations, which is which makes me sad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you could just try it. Just try it on one of the images. Pick one of the images and get rid of the 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 extra box with the text at the bottom. Right. Go into that image in the media library. Mm -hmm. And and update the caption, and then you'll see them side by side, and you'll see you'll see the okay. different. That's actually a good point. Why don't you re actually remove the Bell Pearl auction in Hong Kong first, and then. Yeah, um, and then I just save this, right? Okay. I update this right now. Sure. Let's just. I just want to see the. I wanted to see if the gray box from the Bell Pearl auction goes away. If the oh. if the caption is actually creating that gray the gray box at the bottom, that's what I wanted to see. Oh, mm -hmm. so is this? What should I do? Just let me know. Or should but, should I now go into the? Get rid, of, get rid of both both captions for now. I just want to see if the gray box is being introduced because of the caption. Okay. So should I write something? No, I want you to get rid of both of them. Both of them, okay. Yeah. Hmm. I want to see and then save it, or even just. No, she it. just all she did was get rid of the text. The box is still there. She needs to get rid of the block. There's no. a block on top of the image. Oh, there's a block on top of the image. Where? I don't see it. Where's the block on top of the image? It looks like it's part of the captioning process. In other words, no caption, no gray background. Well, that's why I don't want to see it. Go ahead and view post. Hmm. So why not use captions in the ordinary way beneath the image rather than on top? Well, I just want to see. I want to see the. Go ahead and no, no. Go ahead and go ahead and. I want to see the space. Go ahead and uh, let's look. Let's look at the permalink. Hmm. Should I do? What should I do now? View post. Okay, I should. Okay. View post. Uh, view post. View okay. Post. Right. Mm. Well, what happened? I oh, know. I want you to view post. Yeah. Go, go, go back. Go back. Okay. Right. But you click new. She, she would call it look at the site. Look at the site again. Let's go see the site now that you've taken them out. Okay. We'll refresh the site. But you didn't say the I page. just have to refresh it, right? Mm. Yes. So it's gone. And the. So, so, so in fact. The gray box is being generated by that caption. What's happening probably is that somehow your theme is adding a gray box behind the, the caption, which is causing that that decoration to occur. Because without the caption, it's gone. So wouldn't that wouldn't that be an option in the block then? I don't know. Let's take a look. Go ahead and edit this page. Edit this post. And uh, let's look at that again. And let's just see if there's some options here for this caption. This is called the gallery. There's a gallery caption, and then there's uh, the option to write a caption with the photographs themselves. 
What a, I just haven't used this block before. Let me just I'm gonna, go ahead and guys, I'm gonna experiment on my own site here with this gallery block to see what, what options are there. Docker, have you ever used this uh, block before? Could we try just going to the media library and putting a caption on one of those? Uh, sure, I can do that. Just go to the media media library, yeah. Mm -hmm. Find your picture. You did notice that there are two places to add a caption for a given image, on the image or below the image. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know. So, uh, yeah, that's true. Very good point. That's not the same image. Yeah, it's it's Access the image, the right? right? No, that's not it. Yeah. Exit okay. the top right. Exit the top right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a caption right there. Is that the one? There, it's the one. Yeah, yeah, there's that's this, it. That, that's, the one, that's the one. Right? That's the one. Yeah. So, so put I'm, your caption there. Um, okay, done. And uh, make sure you save it. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry. Yeah, go back to your post now. No, no, I think I made a mistake. Um, no, why? This is actually the metadata here, the, the caption. Yeah. Well, that's, and that's kind of why I went after that to see. Yeah, so go back to your blog post now. Mm hmm. Uh, no, it's not showing. Because yeah, okay. your, your theme is not going to bring in the, uh, the caption. The caption is part of metadata, but it's not being sucked into this block editor. Which, not surprising. Let me let me uh, Rima. Let me just show you kind of. I'm using the same control here mm -hmm. uh, on, a, on a test site I have. And this mm -hmm. is an impact. It's an impact of your theme doing something special, which we we'll probably have to change the CSS. So I, I'm using the same editor here, right. and I use the same exact captioning mechanism that you use mm -hmm. uh, uh, by putting it. And you could you can see it actually creates a gray box, but the way it does it is different than the way it's doing it on yours. It's, yeah, it's, and that's all depends on the theme that you're using. So I'm, I'm using the same. This is the same gallery, mm -hmm. same um, image here. You know, I, I did it exactly the same way you did, but you can see that it's actually doing it in a more tasteful way, and that's because of the theme. Yeah, right. It's simply because of the theme. It's um, because of the theme, then, right? Yeah, your theme is doing something special, and it's there's probably a CSS class. That is decorating it that way because this this is the way the theme is doing it here. It's just creating yeah. this gray uh, opaque opaque mm -hmm. background and putting right. the, and that would work for you. In yours, it's not opaque. It's like completely dark. Yeah? Yes, that's true. So okay. go ahead and share your screen, and we'll see if we can uh, look at the CSS on this bad boy. Have you ever done anything with CSS? No, never. You're about to do CSS. Okay. The CSS is your best friend because their theme is generating CSS, cascading mm -hmm. file sheet that is um, causing that to occur. Well, so okay. at this point, you have a choice. One mm -hmm. is to do what was mentioned, which is a modify your image and brute force uh, a, a, a hard coded piece of text on your image and upload that, or right. or use coding to actually um, alter the way that all your um, your uh, captions will look like when you use this editor. Which way will you want to go? Uh, I think um, how my captions, the last one. So like actually change it so that it's, you don't have to put the text on the image, right? Yeah. Uh, the way I would go too, because then you could change the, your, your captions quickly without having mm -hmm. to change the underlying image, right? 
Right, yeah. So let's go ahead and let's put the captions back on so that we can actually inspect what's happening. Here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here it goes. It's interesting. It's a very simple site. So I'm surprised that your team is doing something so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And put, do the other one too. Just we can see. Okay. I'm wondering why the theme doesn't let you adjust the opacity of that background. I, that's what I'd, like, I'd like to see if there is something in the theme that does that. Let's see. We'll look in the customizer soon. That's the first place we're going to look and see. I, I mean, I'm not surprised. But just, I mean, it's a theme that has a very particular kind of, might be even a side effect. So um, go under appearance on the left hand side mm -hmm. and go under customize. Right. And this is the customizer. So these are all options for your theme called Nisside. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, uh, there's a bunch of options here. Mm -hmm. And the question becomes, of course, what is it on your particular blog post that is potentially controlled by any one of these options? Now it's probably not going to be site identity. It might be colors. Mm -hmm. um, so let's look at colors and see if there's any options there. Each theme has a different set of customizers, mm, but it's probably not kind of any of that stuff. Uh, so I'm just kind of like guessing now, right? I don't know exactly, but I, maybe there is some kind of like a option here. Right. Let's, let's, let's go back and let's look at some of the other options in the customizer. Um, every theme yeah. has a different set of options. Here, right? mm -hmm. um, I don't see anything special here. I don't see anything that would cause this thing. None of these like screen. Not, it, not, it, not in widgets? Well, they're not, these aren't, those aren't widgets, but go ahead and click on, oh, actually, click on post options, actually. Let's see what they have on post options. Right. That's, that's an unusual one. Okay, so it's just asking, would you like this the yeah. excerpt of the post or the full post? Okay. Let's go back to widgets and like, take a look at that one. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So these are just your know, various sidebar widgets. So, so all that controls that sidebar there. So here's a search, recent post. That you can rearrange things there and modify them and add other widgets there to the right. sidebar of your post where it says search. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So all of these mm -hmm. control, control all of this here. Hmm. Yeah, that I know. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so nothing here. Um, Okay, so uh, uh, I don't think there's, we're gonna have to go to CSS. Okay, so go ahead and click the X up here to close the uh, customizer. We have to inspect, click the X here. Yeah, okay. So we didn't make any changes. So now let's go back to your post. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and, go ahead and um, preview this post. So we can take a look and we're gonna, Preview new tab, yeah. Oh, I changed it. Yeah, that looks like the new Gutenberg guy. Looks like version 5.5. Okay, so now let's go back to those. Okay, now we're going to right click on either one of those day of the auction or auction in progress. Right. right click on it and then click inspect. I'm going to drop into the uh, the uh, the view of your page as it appears to the browser in code. Okay. okay. Now. Have you ever been here before? Never. How many people on this call have been to this page before? I live there. Who who said that? Patrick, I'm I'm kidding. I, I I've been I've been there before. I, I'm I'm learning to work with this. Patrick has lived there. I, I honestly can honestly say that when I'm developing a site, especially one that has a theme that I've never used, Patrick is correct. I I you live here, so let me first explain what's happening, okay? Mm -hmm. Because this may seem very, very shocking, but it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. Your web browser is just a program that interprets the code on the right-hand side. Right. Every single page mm -hmm. that you've ever visited since the 1980s on the internet works exactly the same way. Right. I want to repeat that one more time for people on this call. This may be the most interesting thing you'll hear today. Every single web page from Amazon to the New York Times to 
your website and your blog works exactly the same way. The browser, Firefox, Chrome, Edge, uh, Safari, interprets the code on the right side and renders it on the left. Okay. Most people, most people never see what's happening behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. By the way, when people say my website runs slow, it's because there's a lot of code on the right side. And it's okay. difficult for your browser to interpret it all. Your mm -hmm. images, your code, everything. Now, a part of that code is something called cascading style sheet. What a style sheet is, if you ever use Microsoft Word and applied a heading or, mm -hmm. or heading one, two, or three, or applied a style that automatically applies fonts and formatting and colors and centering and all this kind of stuff, the web, the web has a much more complex set of styles that even could be customized to the developer of the theme. So a theme comes with a set of standard styles that are mm -hmm. encoded right there under where it says styles. Right. You see that? Uh -huh. Yeah, I see that. Let me change this to red. I see, Alex, just go up one row and to the right, and uh, there's a, what, a, a block name or class uh, figure fig caption dot blocks dash gallery dash item underscore caption. Yes. Indeed, indeed. Good eye, Robin. Good eye. Let's decompose what's happening on the right hand side here. This is a really complex user interface. I don't expect anyone to figure this out right away. But I tell you right now that if you have a theme and you want to change some functionality in terms of why themes look, not how they function, and sometimes even how they function, but rarely you will need to learn how to use this and learn how to create CSS okay. and modify existing CSS. This will be your mm -hmm. best friend. This will be the it's, thing. it's worth mentioning that all browsers offer this inspector functionality in some form or another. It used to be called web de develop dev tools or something from um, the Chrome days, yep. but it's just called inspector now or inspect. So in yep. this is Chrome, so it's called inspect and other ones called dev tools. So different browsers, when you right click on a web page and you right click on a particular piece of your web page, mm -hmm. it automatically jumps to in the code where that is. And so, so, so Robin has noticed astutely that your captions are using a custom HTML element called fig caption. I believe right. that, that's a custom HTML element. Is that a standard HTML? Fig caption? Uh, this, I'm, I haven't run across it. I mean, in HTML5, it's possible, but I, I mean, it's not hard to look up, is it? I'm looking it up now. Big caption. <laughs> Indeed, it's a, it's a real tag called big caption. Look at that. Holy moly. Okay, well, that's great. So it is yes, a... Yes, there is, there is an HTML fig caption tag. Mm-hmm, indeed. It's an HTML5, no, actually? Yeah, yeah, be HTML5. Okay. I'll so, check, I mean, I'm reading it right now, but it, cool. Um, cool. all now, browsers support it. Now, let's, let's talk about what's happening here. So there's, I'm not going to assume anything. So the code here, which is a tiny little piece of it, is shown in this, in this, ball, in this uh, here, I'm going to do this again. Uh, so mm -hmm. this right here, where it says elements, this is mm -hmm. showing you all the HTML here. Now, this is, there's a lot more here. And one of the things I suggest you do is actually um, detach. Uh, you only have one screen, so it's going to be hard. But... Okay, there's a lot of controls here, but this, you can pull down uh, these, these panes. These are all different panes. You can pull this down by dragging right, I believe, right here and dragging that down. Hmm. So you can see more of your code. Yeah, okay, I get it. Yeah, there's lots of it. Uh, right here, right here. Drag right here down. Where I've where I, where I created a... Uh, a blue. Don't worry, you can't hurt anything. This is all read only. You can't really change anything on your website. But yeah, you can see a little bit. But you can drag this down where I highlighted in blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, drag it down. There you go. Okay. Now, I see, now I see a little bit more of your. Mm -hmm. By the way, you can close this what's new to give yourself some more space. So close that. Right here, close this right here. <laughs> yeah. A lot of stuff going on here, okay? Now, that's a little, so now you see all of these? 
Mm -hmm. You hover over this, let's say this right here. It will actually right. show you in the web page on over here, mm -hmm. over here, over on this side, where that code is appearing. So right. this is reflecting a piece of this web page. Right. Every single a piece of text here in this code represents mm -hmm. a particular rendered piece of content, animation, picture, button, menu, everything. Right. Okay. So when you select, when you right click on the caption, this is the piece that of the of the, of the thing that you're using. But let's mm -hmm. look at this particular. I hope I didn't lose any, everyone. Please interrupt me if something isn't clear. This is a kind of like a crash course to some extent. So this piece of text here is the is is your day of the auction. Yeah. And this is the this is the text of that's the text of the actual. Let me, let me make this a little bit easier to see. So I'm going to put this in like this. This is the text that appears on your website. Yes. Whereas this is the tag that tells your browser how to render it. Okay. And furthermore, there's this little nugget called class equals. What this tells me is that this particular element has a class called blocks gallery item underscore underscore caption. Right. That has a particular coloration and particular set of options that are set. The mm -hmm. question becomes, where is that set? Well, take a look here on the styles. So, right. Uh, okay. we're, gonna pull, we're gonna pull this thing up so we can see more of the styles. By the way, a second if you do if you start doing this, a second monitor is almost a must because honestly, this is impossible to do on screen, especially a smaller screen. So uh, what you want to do is you want to drag this again you want to drag it up a little bit when you, oh i'm not getting it yeah now you, you get it's got to go to up and down arrow you're going too fast stop slower stop stop yeah now go now scroll good so you're showing other parts of this editor this is a really there's a lot of buttons to click here. there's a lot this is for developers right this is for people that right. But now you're becoming a developer because you have a problem with your theme that yeah. is not very obvious to fix. Now, I'm going to clear all my crap again here, and we're going to look at this styles. This is this is where the magic happens. So mm -hmm. These styles are definitions that cascade. What is why? What does that mean? It means they're defined in cascading fashion. It means they're defined, and mm -hmm. other potential other uh, other styles can override. The cast, the uh, the cascade. I'm not going to get into it too much because there's a lot to talk about. But the point is that we've got to find in here where uh, the background image is, uh, the background gray box is being introduced. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 these are the properties. These are this is the actual classes, which are styles. Not not this part. This is actually the file where it's coming from. The cast right. the file. Whereas this is actually. This is a set of styles. So fit caption is actually one of them, but in this case, it's only doing a display block, which is a, a way to show the way it's being displayed, but not but it but it's not showing any of the gray coloration. So using this this scroll bar, scroll down slowly so we can see if there's any other uh, properties that may be setting that gray box. Because this is the cascade, right? Yeah. The cascade goes from bottom to top. I'm going. What am I looking for? I'm looking for some sort of a gradation. I'm looking for some sort of a, uh, some sort of a, um, I don't really see anything. Hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Should I do it again? No, I, I, it's, it's going to be this blocks gallery item caption. But I, I can you type in blocks dash gallery right here in the filter to see if there is a uh, a definition called blocks dash gallery. Blocks dash gallery dash item. Mm -hmm. 
double underscore and caption. Blocks dash. Nope, blocks. Okay, sorry. No, nope, there's no there's no style there. Interesting. Sorry? No, there's no style. There's no there's no definition or select or selector or style that matches I did this. See it earlier. I, did, I did see. Yeah, I did see. Um, there was a gradation with a, a percentage. Really. Capacity. Yeah. In. Okay. Or you moved everything around, but <laughs> there, clear, there was something there. Okay. Yeah. Clear. Clear. Uh, clear this uh, filter. Refresh the page so we see maybe we can reload uh, this and we'll keep the dev tools up and running. Uh, scroll down to where your um, to where your caption is over here on the on the left side. Oh, in your content right here. Yeah. Okay. Look at it again. Maybe got another one. Okay. So right click on uh, uh, on auction in progress here. And you can do an inspect again so we can go to it. Okay. Aha, here it is. Disappeared on us. Okay, there it is. Background linear gradient. Okay. okay. So, so, that, so now we found the class. And why do I say that? Well, it's right here. It's blocks gallery item. Mm -hmm. Big caption. This class right here. Right. Uh, is, and by the way, the ones that are applied in the current element. Are not are are bolded, and the ones that are gray are kind of also share this definition, but mm -hmm. are used probably elsewhere. So, what we're going to do is we're going to turn off this background. So, go navigate over here to to these properties. Yes. You see how the check boxes are turned on? Yeah. Click the one next to background turn off this property temporarily and you see the gray box goes away doesn't actually solve a completely our problem because auction in progress is clipped yeah oh why is it clipped well let's turn off the padding on this particular style to see why okay, so the padding is actually important let's turn that back on and now let's increase Turn on this little arrow so we could see. No, nope. keep it on. You're 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 adding and removing uh, properties to this particular set of classes. Right. This little, this little arrow will open up any sub items under padding, top, bottom, left, right. Should I? Yep. Click on it. Don't be afraid. If you yeah. if you're, you're going to be a developer and you're f afraid, don't do this. Okay. okay. You've got yeah. to build up absolute testing and you want to be curious and ambitious to fix your problems. If you're afraid, right. don't do this. If okay. you're fearful, do not do this. I'm talking to anybody, everybody here. If you but, think but in, in terms of the problems, inspector, I, I think your key point, Alex, is that whatever you change here is only for this exercise of inspecting. Yeah, it's not saving anything because you're not right. But if you were post. editing the file or the page or post. Yeah. Then that's when you have to pay attention to saving it or not saving it because something's actually happening. Yeah. This yeah. mode of inspecting doesn't affect the underlying page that's being displayed. Yeah. Only Notice its okay. presentation in this browser. Notice yeah. you're not an edit post, right? You're not you're not editing your post, you're viewing your post. No. See, so so we're showing we're looking under the hood of the web browser to see what's going on. Basically. Right. So this I'm thinking that this padding. Maybe the bottom of this padding needs to be decreased. So okay. decrease, decrease nine pixels to zero pixels and see what happens. Okay. No, I. Nope. Nope. Type, uh, go in there to nine pixels and change the nine to zero. Okay. Change it to a zero. I'm doing it, but it's not happening. No, hit, hit escape. Okay. Erase that zero. It's not erasing. You're right over here. You're over here. Erase that. Okay. So open that again. Mm -hmm. Go to padding. 
Mm -hmm. Click in there. Yeah. Click. Click okay. again. Click again. Yes. Now, no, click again. Yep. So hit delete. Delete. It's not happening. You're not able to erase the nine? No. You sure? Yeah. Go ahead. If you put zero. It's not happening. When I put zero, this thing happens. Okay. Uh, erase that, erase the zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, click right in here. Yes. Change uh, change the nine to a zero. So change the change the nine to a twenty. What twenty? Yeah, twenty. There we go. Okay. All oh. Right. Yeah. Okay. So basically, and there's and this is going to be a problem with white because you've got background white and on white so you got white. Mm -hmm. text. So that ain't gonna work either. By the way, so let's say you wanted to make this, so okay, so we've got padding 20 pixels on the bottom will work. So that's, okay. inter that's interesting. Uh, and now you've got um, the color, FFF. Well, that's just not gonna work, is it? No. Because you've got black background or dark background and you got white background. So you have to choose a color by clicking on this little guy here. That will mm -hmm. bring up a color picker that will uh, allow you to switch a different color. Right. For example, maybe one of those theme colors. One of those. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying this yeah. out of this. Oh, wow, look at that. That looks lovely. Okay. So let's keep that. Uh -huh. Let's just stop, okay. And now, basically now we've got what we want, okay? Now, yes. So. We've got kind of what we'd like to, uh, to look like. And by the way, I want you to now click here to your scroll bar and go back up to your other. Uh, no, 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 you gotta, no, 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 no. You gotta go back to your color. You haven't finished your color picker yet. Go okay. back to your color picker and select that color you wanted. Okay. Yes. Hit, and, hit, and then hit return. Okay, now go back to your scroll and go back to your other images that have, Captions. I think you have a few other ones. There you go. I want you to notice something in those other captions. Oh, right look, there. they've changed. Why? Why? Because of this. This is a quiz. You why? increase the padding. Right, but why did this one change as well as the other one? I don't know about that. Think very hard why this one would change as well as that one. We because they're all linked. Correct. And, and what do you mean by linked? What do they share? The same code. Exactly. They share the blocks gallery item caption. Very good. So, so because you changed it here, it cascades effectively, although that's not necessarily what's happening, but it is shared by other places. And by the way, wherever you use the caption in the gallery on your whole website, it will now, not quite yet, we haven't saved this, but we will now create this copy of the CSS and we're going to, um, uh, and we're going to uh, uh, apply it to your CSS, okay? Here's okay. what I want you to do. This is, mm -hmm. this is gonna be the trickiest part. I want you to select this text right here and copy it to your clipboard by clicking at the beginning and uh, selecting all the way down, all the way to the bottom, not that far, but all the way to the bottom. Okay, I want no, it's too far. I yeah, want you to. I, I want you to select to the bottom right here, to this curly brace. Alex, isn't there a right click that lets you pick from either the whole element or part the HTML or whatever? Uh, I, wish, I, I haven't found a way to easily select the bottom the three buttons at the, the dots at the bottom right. Uh, okay, try that. I mean, does it select all the changes we've made? Yeah. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Actually, I, mean, I want to see. Now, I want right? to see. Yeah. See. I don't know. I don't. I wish I knew how to. Yeah, I wish I knew. I how know to, that in the box in the in the window above, uh -huh. when you click elements above, 
uh -huh. you do get a bunch of choices about whether you want the inner or the outer. Oh, yes. Yes. All that true. stuff, right? Yes, you can still You should be able to get the equivalent somehow for this. I agree. Because it's the same problem, right? Yeah, I agree. But I, I haven't. Anyway, let's not worry because, about it. But it's worth figuring product, out. Yeah, because you, you can select the class and select it, but it's the original one. Since I've right. modified it, I, I don't know if it's going to. Right. I mean, you can, you can try, actually, just for shits and giggles, let's try. Go ahead and go to the um, um, uh, to the code up here and right click on this code here. There? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go to copy, go to copy and copy. Uh, well, you can't it. lose with the outer HTML. Oh, yeah, right? copy styles right here. Copy styles, copy styles. Copy. Okay, now open up Notepad. Did you see that it highlighted all that stuff in the colored section below? Uh, no, I missed that. Well, I'm just saying it flashed. You know, the oh, good. Oh, good. 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 So, so I think you. that worked. Okay, open up Notepad. Yeah, and I pasted it there. Uh, and bring it into the screen you're sharing so we can see what you pasted. How do I bring that in? Just drag just it into the tab. screen that you're sharing. Are you just sharing the browser or your, your whole computer? I think I. I may just be sharing the browser. Oh. Okay, so let me just go back to. I want you to share everything. Shares. Okay, yeah. So. So I want to see what I want to see if it actually copied the correct color and the correct padding definition. So the, the screen, background. right? Yeah. Show us, show us your notepad. Can you see it now? Uh, yeah. So that's that's kind of okay. Well, that's. Uh, yeah, no. Yeah, I copied a style, but it's some a bunch of other styles, but not the ones we needed. Uh, to that. Yeah. Those, aren't, those aren't the right. Those aren't the right ones that we need, though. Actually, no. Some of them are actually. No. See, the padding is twenty px. I take that back. Uh, yes, it's there. No, this is good. It's actually doing a lot. Oh, I see. It's all the cascade. So it's giving me not just the stuff we edited. But also everything else. Well, it's the whole style, right? Yes, but interestingly right. enough, it doesn't give you the the the, the selector. Right. It gives you the properties, but not the selector. You need the selector. Well, I think yeah, for the selector, I think you want to go back to the same place and just choose the selector. Yeah, but I just like copying and pasting from directly from the styles because I get everything I need. Without sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. So okay, go ahead and close this. We're gonna. Close the notepad. Mm -hmm. And don't save. And and now we're going to, uh, yeah, you've got that selected. Now right click on there. And no, 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 no. I, no. I need to do that again. Yeah, you got to select from the top to the bottom. Just a sec. Yeah, this is tricky a little bit. To that, and, that, and then just, just hit Control C to copy to your clipboard. Mm -hmm. That's what I know I do. And then open up your no notepad and paste it. Mm. Sweet. So that is, in fact, your uh, full style that you changed. It's okay. It's, in fact, it's probably a lot more than the styles that we need, but that's okay because you've got other styles that probably will share this kind of approach mm -hmm. beyond the one that you're using. Thank but you. Alex, since they're all fig caption, then isn't this a site-wide, a global change you want to make? Yeah, well, I don't know, right? Because I don't know what other, because if you move that, move the notepad out of the way, mm -hmm. um, what I really, the only, only selectors you really need are the ones that are in, in, in black. Blocks gallery, grid, blocks gallery, item, fig caption, that one. And it, and it appears to be .wp, block gallery, blocks gallery, item, fig caption. So those, you don't need these 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 light gray ones because they have they probably affect other ones, but they all they all seem to affect the fig caption. So I don't know I don't know what that would hurt. I think we just I think they see they all use the fig caption HTML element at the back there. So they're all affecting. So there's probably other captions that you probably want to do this way. So I think for now we're going to keep them. You know what I'm saying, Alvin? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're all like. Well, all and, and in any event, it's probably better to go small and then add to it when it works, then to start large and have to prune it down to find something that works. Yeah, but like here, all of these affect fig captions, which is used as captions, maybe not necessarily on this, but 
they all, I'd like them to all uh, share the same thing. So I noticed that in, so go ahead and um, go back to your notepad. Um, I'm gonna, okay, go back to your notepad. Now select all of this again, copy, make sure it's in your clipboard. And now we're gonna make this permanent. So copy that to your clipboard. Now we're gonna go back to your theme customizer. And uh, where do I find that? And it's always at the top of your page, actually, always here. Oh, customize, yes, <laughs> sorry. That's okay. You mm -hmm. can close this uh, this uh, inspector now. Mm -hmm. Notice now it's giving you this. And now you're gonna scroll here. And now you're gonna look at this little guy right here. That is your uh, additional CSS. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to paste right in here. Here? Yep. So this is CSS that you're now adding beyond the CSS that has been used on your site. Okay. Okay. Now, actually, you can preview this to see if it's actually doing what you want it to do because the customizer, the way it works, is any CSS you've added should automatically appear here. So can you navigate to your blog from here? And uh, let's take a look and see if that is actually applied properly. Look at that. Now, see, interestingly enough, I see that this background is still not doing it. So we've actually commented it out. So mm -hmm. I want you to take out this comment here. And I want you to take out this comment here. And I want you to change all of this mm -hmm. to uh, background none. All right. of this have to take it out? Yeah, well, because that this definition, linear gradient, is actually this weird gray box gradient. That's all that's what that is. So just tell me this all you this know, has all, to be not the semicolon, but everything before the semicolon. Okay. Delete. Now type none. Okay, here we go. Oh wow, yes. And now click publish to save your thank, thank you so much. There you go. Not let your one extra space in front of the background, but I, that doesn't obviously matter. You can change that. Except stylistically. Yeah, you should check. You should check that. Now, I, I want to kind of test your knowledge here. Like, I know you probably don't understand what every one of these does, but do you understand the general concept of these are the select, these are the uh, classes, which is the kind of definitions that have been applied to your caption, and these are what I call properties, which are basically various settings that apply mm -hmm. to, to this definition here? No. You don't get that, yeah. yeah. No. It's, I, I highly encourage you to read up on CSS and take maybe a few videos to understand okay. the difference. This you know, Rima, it would be finish. much, a little easier to understand if there were just one class, one selector, say like the very first one, it was just dot blocks. I mean, uh, and all the rest of that stuff down to the word fig caption were all deleted. Right. So right. blocks is then the selector and the properties associated whenever that style is used mm -hmm. is in that list from item two to item 11. Right. Here they've defined a bunch of classes as having the same common element, same common properties. And later on, there'll be each one of these individual guys will get some additional property to vary from the main group. And this okay. is just a, an efficient way to set the values for these properties as a starting point so that you can then vary them slightly as you go. And it makes, makes changing the styles much easier with this way that looks more complicated first, but it's actually mm -hmm. simpler in the end. Okay. And the final thing to realize is that because you added an additional CSS, you're mm -hmm. adding, you're overriding the themes definition and you're overriding the cascade, meaning you're saying, look, the theme may have these, by the way, the theme, you'll, you can find a file in your theme called style CSS most likely that will define all of this and it will define a default set. You could have changed it there, but I, I rather change it here because the, you're actually clearly identifying that you're changing this and whatever you have in here, you, this is your per personal customization. For example, okay. mm -hmm. let me give you, like how would you change the font size to 26 pixels? The font size is here, right? Yeah. So I can change that and then I can publish it. 
Go nuts. Right? And oh. also I can change the color as well. Go nuts. Oh, wow. Okay, and just one uh, question. Where do I start reading about CSS? I mean, just for beginners. <laughs> you Google CSS and you start reading. The, no, this is, this, is, this is where I jump in. Look in the chat. Okay. I, put in a link, I put in a link for the Odin project. Oh, right. And there's a they have a very good responsive web design course. I've been I've been in computers forever. I'm um, I'm old, and uh, uh, but I've never certified. Like I picked up a lot of this stuff in bits and pieces, but I've never certified it. So I'm working my way through exactly this course. I just finished the re responsive web design aspect of that project. I'm doing a full stack developer. You don't have to do that. Very cool, but. Uh, the response to web design, just kind of grind your way through it. Um, mm -hmm. That the the secret to all computer knowledge is persistence. Just okay. refuse. You know, if you have to come back to it five times, come back to mm -hmm. it five times. If you're getting frustrated and stuff, get up and walk away. You this know, and come and cool. and come back, but never, never, never quit. Very if cool you resource. Enough time, you know, do it. Very cool. Very nice resource, Odin Project. Never seen it before, but is this free? Is this is this access for free? Free, 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 free. Amazing. This is good stuff here. Full, full on course. Like I, you can't, you, you can't, you can't beat this. this I'm sorry, I much. missed the URL for this. Where, what are we look, talking about? It, it, it's in, it's, it's in, in the, it's in, it's in, it's in the chat. Oh, the Odin one. Yeah, no, I got that one. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just by the by, Alex, make sure to get the chat window uh, transcript because this uh, plugin that I'm using for Zoom, uh, I can't find a control to do it. Okay, no problem. Um, yeah, so cool. This is a very good resource. Let's, uh, I'm going to stop your, okay, so anyway, so if you change font size to 26 pixels, you'll preview it, hit publish, so you can change it here, mm -hmm. you'll, pre you'll preview the change here, then when you want to save the change, you click publish here. Right, um, and this is your customizer will allow you to, and of course you can add other CSS here, and look at it in your site to see. This is actually a nice little user interface, the customizer, but you have to know what kind of a little bit what's going on. There is, there is one little frill, Alex, on your cascading uh, point that this uh, way of adding CSS is the last thing, so therefore uh, it takes priority over any other CSS. And there's that important declaration which. You know, it was a, a technical point, but I mean, it matters here in that if you, you sometimes a CSS property that you want to use somehow doesn't work and you're just confounded trying to find what's blocking it or, or getting priority in the, in the cascade. And so there's a way, just Google uh, exclamation mark important and it'll mm -hmm. explain how you add that to a property to override everything else, no matter where it is in the cascade. Uh, Broadly speaking, but usually if something isn't working, it means that you've got the wrong classes selected. Uh, right? That could be lots of reasons. Of right. Well, I mean, but in general, if something is not yeah. actually happening, you, you just need to identify class. the right class, and, right. and then after you've got the right class, you're not affecting the right set of properties to make the change that you want. By the way, there are probably several thousand properties. Okay, so like, and it depends on what kind of thing you're doing. So this is not one of these things where there's some very common ones like. You know, but there's also one called display none, which would just hide it, you know, uh, visibility hidden. So this Odin project is really cool. Thank you for sharing. Um, I was just going to share the, um, but, but Patrick, you've gone through the full stack. Is that what you're working for? Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate what you've done. Thank you. Of course. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the, I'm doing the full stack development because I have, um, <laughs> Pardon me. I, ha I have a number of projects that I, I, I can't wait for others. I can't. It's very hard to communicate the requirements and get them done the way you want, so on and so forth. Yeah. But, You're just putting it in your own hands. Yeah. So, this, so when I went to the Odin project, I went to front end. There's several learning tracks. This is full on coding. This is also full on coding. Front end is what you're doing right now. This is you're basically changing the theme and but don't do Google, Google and Apple progressive web apps. Uh, yeah, so they look a lot like mobile applications, but they're actually web pages. Yeah, Alex, I've added a uh, URL to the chat window 
which if you're interested in the background and how we've gotten to the point we are with CSS, this is a really excellent uh, uh, post uh, from the W3C, uh, which runs through how, you know, how did we go through all the changes that we have with CSS and end up where we are now so that you understand better what it is this, this technology called CSS. A language, I will definitely, I will definitely read this. This is really cool because this is actually the folks that designed the original standards for the web, right? All this and essentially, one of the key points is that don't think of CSS the way we used to as a language, but rather as a, 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 a set of modules. Mm. Uh, which are at various levels of sophistication and value. And so CSS today is kind of this assemblage of all these modules, which hardly anybody knows all of them, but mm. you learn them as you need them, mm. starting with a core. And then as things come up, like, you know, say pseudo selectors before and after, I'm not going to learn about those until I have an actual application or you, requirement to use them. But it's really handy in giving you a, this, this post a, a sort of a sense of how things evolve over time on the web, uh, given that this CSS stuff is kind of the core, one of the core legs of the whole internet sort of phenomenon. Well, Steve raised his hand, is he? Sorry? That's great. I, I have a, somebody that raised their hand. Steve, could you raise your hand? Yep. Yeah, go ahead. Good afternoon, rather good evening, everybody. Hi, good evening. I am a very beginner level um, user and I have a basic question that I have been seeing around when I went to different websites to, like a registrars to register um, for hosting. There was a time when I used, I remember having seen only the options for Linux, Linux hosting and Windows hosting. But more and more so when I go to any um, website today, I also see a third option that says WordPress hosting. So my basic question is, what is the difference in Linux, Linux hosting and Windows hosting as compared to the specifically WordPress hosting? So although those same websites also mention under list of features that you are able to install WordPress right away with one click, even on Linux hosting as well as on Windows hosting. Mm -hmm. And also they tell you that you are able to update it and like kind of same bells and whistles, which they list separately under WordPress hosting. Right. So that's what I want to clarify. For example, if I come tomorrow, if I choose to get a hosting account and my intention is to use WordPress. So which one of these should I choose where I want to start like a regular website based on WordPress, but also later on, I want to add a blog. That's a tricky question. Anyone have a, an answer for us here? Well, I think the first question, uh, Linux and Windows, uh, if that's the re uh, presumably that's a reference to what the server's running, uh, and so Linux is by far the most popular. Mm -hmm. Windows tends to be an, an extra cost sort of option. That is to say, when you're interacting with the server, you're interacting with a Windows operating system rather than the Linux one. Mm -hmm. um, but for shared hosting, I think it's pretty much an, always going to be Linux as the operating system of the server, but that's just not something that you really care about. Correct. And then WordPress is an application that runs on the server. And so it can run on a Windows server or a Linux server or a Mac server, or you know, I'm sure dozens of other servers. So that's the basic sort of idea is that it's the same WordPress running on any of the operating systems at the server level. Um, that doesn't really affect the way you work with WordPress and um, use it as the basis of creating your site. And then a WordPress site is, in effect, a blog that has site capabilities on top of that. And we tend to just think primarily of the site, but the blog is an integral component that, right. in a sense, is built, well, is, the, is part of the building blocks of WordPress itself. So you can't turn it off. You can just simply not use it. But mm -hmm. it's, it's there whenever you want to create a post, then you are, you've just started your blog. Pages, on the other hand, uh, are non-blog content mm -hmm. and follow a slightly different set of rules, but um, not particularly from the editing point of view. Anyway, mm -hmm. that, that is kind of a quick overview. Yeah, I think it's kind of a marketing uh, term, WordPress hosting, because it's posted on Linux or Windows, but usually Linux to begin with, right? 
going to be hosted on one of those operating systems. And then it's, it's just, just a like, set of added, added features. They just want to trick you in buying yeah. that specific uh, title yeah, because, WordPress because, hosting. Because people say, I want a WordPress site. They don't say, I want a Linux host. Right. They say, okay. I want a WordPress site. And so when they see that, it's like, oh, it's WordPress hosting. Great. But in the end, it's on Linux usually, not Windows, but sometimes Windows. And um, um, but they sometimes have maybe some themes they give you, plugins, mm -hmm. maybe backup features, and it's all very different. And so WordPress hosting on SiteGround may be something different at GoDaddy, something very different at mm -hmm. WP Engine. Well, actually, you know, cPanel, which is by far the most popular administrative sort of framework mm -hmm. for hosting, has a Windows version which right. means that if you're familiar with cPanel, you're going to find WH something or other from the same guys, very, mm -hmm. very similar. I think the biggest difference from the Linux versus Windows point of view is that Windows costs money. Linux is free. Oh, yeah. And there's probably more Linux administrative sort of dev guys, dev mm -hmm. guys than there are for Windows, or at least less expensive ones. And so that's pretty much, I mean, um, Google, for example, is built on Linux. Uh, mm -hmm. AWS is built on Linux. Facebook is built on Linux, mm -hmm. right? Because they're free and they can be easily modified by the user. Uh, and when you're big enough, you essentially create your own versions. So is it um, uh, appropriate to summarize it that for a, from a general user point of view, if you want to use the WordPress features, functionality, and all bells and whistles, simply go with the Linux hosting and don't fall a prey for the WordPress hosting titled marketing gimmick. Well, wait a second. They, what, what Alex referred to as this marketing thing is that there's a kind of a base level of hosting mm -hmm. where you do 99% of the work um, mm -hmm. and, and things like backup, for example, you might be responsible for. Mm -hmm. Then there's a tier of services that's at least a one big step upwards mm -hmm. called managed WordPress. Right. And then there's a level above that, Alex, what's that called? Um, oh, like VPS or like uh, Yeah, I mean, it's just, it, you get more support, more things done for you, more automation, more powerful, you know, more memory, more processing speed, more storage, mm -hmm. and so better, on. Better support. Because in theory, you're getting 50,000 viewers a day rather than mm -hmm. 500 versus right. five. Um, but for, for the vast majority of us, any host, mm -hmm. or any hosting provider that offers WordPress, doesn't matter what they call it, it's mm -hmm. going to be the same WordPress that everybody else offers because it's right. something very specific, right? Mm -hmm. And they'll offer you one button installs or one click installs, right. which is just a script that the server mm -hmm. runs to do the basic setting up of the WordPress mm -hmm. site so that you can fill out the forms and be up and running quickly. Um, mm -hmm. And then that particular script monitors updates and might notify you that there's a new update Thanks. and that it'll install it for you. But since that's trivial anyway, um, I don't think many people use it. I'll tell you though, with WordPress hosting, you get what you pay for. So you pay $4.99 for a Linux host that has cPanel to install WordPress. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very likely you'll do something on your WordPress site that will tap out resources and break your site. Very likely. Like you may install a plugin that requires more, more horsepower or mm -hmm. your database may run slow. So whereas if you pay 15, 20, 30, 40 dollars a month, that's a completely up opposite. That's like WP Engine where you mm -hmm. have not only an amazing WordPress experience, that's all you get. You can't host anything else. You can't put Moodle. Joomla or anything, you just get WordPress. But they give you tools to, for example, copy environments from production to staging. They have real-time chat support to help you with problems. Mm -hmm. And so you get what you pay for, right? Right. So, so if, if I understand correctly, for again, coming back to the final kind of um, takeaway, we are good to start with the Linux hosting and just come tomorrow if we get to a point where you got a lot of traffic and you need all those features, bells and whistles and want to offload some of your legwork onto the provider, then you can definitely think about moving to WordPress hosting or a managed version of hosting. Sure. sure. I actually find that for a really good value, there's a company called MDB Hosting. I have a friend in Seattle, Emory Gill. I send her people that don't like their hosting provider. Mm -hmm. It's just the MDD because they do work. They do regular Linux and Windows and VPS hosting, 
they have good value for what they provide for WordPress mm -hmm. users, and she and she migrates her site. So what's cool about that is like somebody I had somebody tap out on their hosting on GoDaddy, and then that she moved it to MDD and it runs like it runs perfectly. Um, and so it's not an expensive hosting, but it's high mm -hmm. quality. So not it's every host. Wait, sorry, go ahead. No, just not every host is, you know, both the same. I was going to say that. If you go up the the tiers in in cost of hosting, mm -hmm. you'll get the benefit of them managing the migration or doing the migration from your old host to the new host. Which, mm -hmm. in point of fact, is a fairly trivial operation. Mm -hmm. If there's nothing weird about your site and it is running currently on cPanel, mm -hmm. then it's something that uh, in just a matter of minutes. Uh, it can be transferred from one cPanel host to another cPanel host, uh, pr probably with a script that we don't see. <laughs> but actually, you know, migrating a site itself is not that complicated a thing if you have the right plugin or, or automation for it. So the last thing is um, currently I have a um, um, genetic one on WordPress.com, which I am thinking to revive and take on to some independent hosting. Do you people, based on your experience, um, would recommend any Canadian or any US-based uh, hosting? MDD hosting in the US. What were the initials, uh, Alex? MDD. M Can you please Bob post it in David. the chat? Yeah, I'll, I'll bring it up on the site here too. Thanks. So honestly, for, for the value for money, I think this is one, and she, I, I trust her because she's tried like 20, 30 different hosts. Mm -hmm. This is not a provider that you're going to find advertising over the internet, but honestly, it really is. It really, it did make a huge difference. I was really impressed. So like they've got, uh, she puts people on cloud one or cloud two, very, very reasonably priced. Uh, you can, of course. Give us the link. Let us look. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, yeah, MDD hosting. Uh, I thought I should have my screen here. A second. Uh, here's the link and, and oops. Let me just send this to everyone. No. Um, Great. Okay. So it, it's really good. Like I had personal experience with it. Like I was surprised. It's, it's not really a really huge organization, but um, um, they have really, this is very reasonable pricing for what amounts to quite a bit of the access. Unlimited disk space, C panel, one CPU core, one gigabyte of RAM, which is quite a bit. And uh, seven bucks a month, pretty damn good. You can for double yeah, that. This yeah. this is a, a, a competitive price. There are dozens of, of guys providing it. So it really boils down to if somebody recommends this a, a service and you trust the person that recommends it, then that's really the very best thing to go by because mm -hmm. I mean if if somebody's offering it at three bucks a month and this one's four bucks a month, it mm -hmm. really boils down to experience with each host. And so what Alex is saying is that, you know, he's recommending them. So if you believe and, you know, find Alex credible, then that's the best recommendation you can get. And notice something, they don't even say anything about WordPress on here. The word mm -hmm. WordPress, I don't believe even appears on, oh, light cache for WordPress, yeah. So that's right. the, other, the other thing to bear in mind is that uh, WordPress is only one of, you know, several dozen applications that you might want to run on right. your hosting account. Mm -hmm. And so Drupal might be another one or mm -hmm. a, um, uh, what is that? Tiger CRM, uh, right. which is a, another open source CRM application. So you could run two or three or four WordPress like applications right. all on the same account um, using the same quick install method that applies to WordPress for mm -hmm. Drupal or, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. And, and most hosts will explain to you that it's not even something that they spend much time on. It just comes in mm -hmm. packages to them mm -hmm. that cool. they offer to you. So it's not even, it's not a big deal. It's nothing special. It's when, just, you, when, you, when you see cPanel, usually it means there's probably one click installs for lots of applications. Right. And cPanel is probably 65 or 70% of hosts. Yeah. And in my own sort of experience, since I'm very familiar with cPanel, Mm -hmm. It really is a pain in the ass to have to learn somebody else's administration system yeah. mm -hmm. in order for them to save a few bucks each month. They're giving me a real headache. So right, I wouldn't right. work with a host who doesn't use, unless they had cPanel, 
and mm -hmm. I'm actually paying a little bit extra per month now because they split their clientele between right. some other method of administering sites and cPanel because what six nine months ago cPanel changed their pricing and mm -hmm. so all of a sudden it became more expensive for most hosts mm -hmm. and so their prices went up but also then they offered alternatives for the bargain basement level of hosting. And last question, if I, I have seen this offer, obviously you people already know that most of them, if you go for a annual uh, package, they throw in a free domain name. So my next question is, for example, because if I already have a domain name registers with some other provider and I choose this hosting uh, with a uh, provider B, is it possible to get a different uh, domain name, but not, not use that with the, with the hosting package? rather use the, the previous existing one with this one and then use this new domain name and maybe with some other host or later on maybe with the same host? Sure, sure, for sure. You just pointed at different locations. Oh, uh, no, I, 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 I think you have to start off, Alex, like, with using can I, can I, can, the Sorry, can I, can, I, can I jump in for a second? Uh, it's Patrick here. Uh, you use the F word, sir? Me? Okay, no. you said, yeah, yeah, you said free. <laughs> Oh. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Please get that out of your head. That's sure. Sure, 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 sure. Okay. Don't 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 get sucked. There's no free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If they're if they're giving it to you with this hand, they're taking it away with the other hand somehow. Got it. We have uh, uh, the guy I'm working with. We have uh, uh, a hosting package. We host. Uh, I think he's got ten or twenty sites. Um. Hmm. A bunch of them, anyway. I'm working on a couple of them, and um, so they say, "Oh, unlimited disk space," but right. they limit the number of file handles you can have. Got it. So you can, yeah, you can. Your files can be as big as you want. You just okay. can have only. You're limited by the number of files you can you can have there. And we actually had to go through because there was we were playing around with something and used up a lot of the file handles. We had to take take down our test area. Mm -hmm. So we could build another site, you know what I mean? Just to make mm -hmm. sure that we had enough room because you don't uh, want to run into that thing where all of a sudden all your sites are not right. are running like dogs. So right. you really have to be able to drill down on the, on the details. Again, if you look in the chat, mm -hmm. I pasted in a quote from the Wikipedia page. Right. I just see that. Okay. Yeah. So Linux, Linux is far and away. Mm -hmm. The serve the, the 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 server of choice. Microsoft Microsoft wishes they could, and Microsoft is basically. By the way, Microsoft has basically given up and incor and started to incorporate Linux into Windows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, right. Microsoft, because your now. platform is quite happy to host your WordPress application and uh, <laughs> anything in the open source world that they used to fight tooth and nail against, they now openly embrace and offer to you, of course, for nothing, because they, they can't charge for what they get free. Mm -hmm. Well, let's look, look at SiteGround here. They have hosting called web hosting, okay? They call, the names are called Startup, Grow Big, Grow Geek, right? You see one website, unlimited, unlimited, 10, 20, 40, right? It appears to be nice and well, and you go to, WordPress hosting and huh, lo and behold, it's the same names, the same prices, yeah. the same everything, right? So what's the difference between this and this? Nothing, there's no difference. It's just a marketing, in this case, it's just a marketing thing. Mm -hmm. what, what, and so to, to Patrick's point, he's absolutely right. So free WP migrator means there's probably some kind of a plugin that allows you to, to migrate yourself. It means you have to do it, but you know, they, they will, they, but they give you something. Free WordPress installation, well, of course it's free because it's WordPress, <laughs> WordPress is free, Josh. Yeah. Right? Uh, Got it. WordPress auto updates, well, that's built into WordPress. This is no, new. But under, understand, understand how they handle that on the back end. They have an image of a standard custom rare image, and they just put your name on it and go, there you go, and put it in a folder with your name on it. Mm -hmm. Just make an account for you. and. They're not, they're, not, they're not doing any more work than they have to. Right. Trust me. Right. Thank right. you very not much, at, guys. It's not at $6.99 a month. And by the way, 
this means discounted, guess what? That means after a year or maybe two, you're going to go up to fourteen ninety nine a month. Okay, um, and then um, this is one website though. This is very interesting. You know, one website on hosting. On hosting, it's interesting that they actually limit because if you have a hosting plan with an MDD, they, they don't they don't limit how many websites you host. They don't say you can only put one host, one website. Not, nowhere does it say one website here. So unlimited websites, because the website is the folder with WordPress installed. Okay? Well, it does say at the top, it, uh, it, unlimited it, it, domains it, it, and it unlimited bandwidth for domain, the host. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you yeah. can't have like more than one domain without having more than one site. Yeah, there you go. Because I mean, like, yeah, we don't, we don't limit, that's yeah. right. Anyway, so there's, a, there's they, these guys have thought through a lot of this because this is an artificial limit. This is a limit that says, got it, and then all of a sudden they go to unlimited, where you're gonna run a million websites under for $9.99 a month? Of course not, don't be ridiculous. So I'll shut you down in 10 seconds. So this is recent, free SSL, because let's encrypt. Used to charge 70, 80, 100 bucks a, a year for, uh, for a simple piece of cryptographic text. And now- And, 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 mess, and, mess, and, and mess up the certificate management. Yeah, so thank God this is now uh, SSL is free, and there's still some hosts that still charge you for SSL. They're going nameless, but but all these words free really don't mean much in the in the sense that they they're marketing, right? They're like, well, yeah, we've got a, a host that has email service on it. You have an email inbox, and you can authenticate and send emails. Well, but look at look at look at the middle the middle column with unlimited websites, then immediately below that. 20 gig space. Right. So as many as unlimited websites, as long as you can fit them in 20 gig. Right. And, because that's a know, quota on your, on your home directory, right? So like, yeah. Which is a bloody right. big quota, if you ask me. Well, actually, I've seen websites grow to one or two gigs each, so 10 websites. Pretty, pretty. Yeah, stable. you're not, you're not, you're yeah, not. Yeah, but I mean, we're not. talking. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Just while I think of it, um, Alex, on MDD, yeah. Uh, if anybody's interested, they have summer savings uh, of up to 50% off. Uh, if anybody, you know, just so that people take that into account. That's amazing. That's, that's great. Mo monthly billing cycle. That's, yeah. So this is a really small, I mean, relatively speaking, they're smaller than SiteGround. SiteGround gives away free WordPress at every meetup in the world. Every WordCamp, I've seen these guys just give away free WordPress accounts. They must have millions of WordPress sites running out. Well, well, you know what, though? It depends to what extent, which which meetup you're talking about. The oh. meetups, for example, in Eastern Europe, typically offer one year of the Go Geek top of the line plan for free, but you only get three months of that if you're at the US, um, you know, the November one. And uh, I forget what it is for Toronto. It's somewhere halfway between the two. I had to come in as a somebody from like Bulgaria or whatever. <laughs> which is actually where their site ground is based. Yeah. But they did give me the free one year because it was offered at a WordCamp. And, yep. uh, and I said that I was at that WordCamp. But here's what's interesting here on the Go Big and Go Geek, this is where they add WordPress specific stuff. So, and by the way, again, this is under web hosting. This is not under WordPress hosting. It's gonna be the same there. These are just identical here. And you say you got on-demand backup copies. That might be useful to be able to click a button you can have up to five on-demand backup copies of your WordPress site. Caching, well, this is normally standard for a thing, but they make a big deal. Interestingly enough, no caching on this plan. I wouldn't even touch this plan with a 10-foot pole because if there's no caching of any kind at the server level, your site's gonna run like molasses. So you need some kind of caching. And then staging, which is the ability to create a staging copy, do some experimentation for, and push it to production, and then collaborations with, with multiple accounts. So really, this this is the plan. Really, that people are gonna, you know, you're not. I'm not gonna recommend anybody buy this plan. It's gonna be here. But interestingly enough, I get but they, they, no. But they they do that. They do that on purpose. They punch enough. They offer a plan at, at a very low price, so they can blast that all over the internet. Yeah. And it's bait and switch. Yeah. Oh yeah. Here's a six ninety nine plan, but it's crap. Yeah. You know. Oh, oh, you really, really. Oh, you if you that's you have that requirement, and they catch you. We catch you out on one requirement and go, oh, well, now we have jobs. You really do need on-demand copies of any 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 hosting plan, which is make a nice, easy, quick, one-click copy and hopefully restore. Uh, these guys do... Yeah, and no, any, any serious production site, you have to have that. Yeah. So then you've got Git here, you've got GitHub, so you got... Anyway, 
these guys are different, right? So this is a, a good comparison. I'm not focusing on these two providers on purpose. I'm just saying these guys are raw hosting. They don't give a shit what you run on, right? They don't care. It could be WordPress, it could be whatever. But they do specialize and add information and services like Lightspeed Cash, which, by the way, for the site that I'm running that was really slow on, on GoDaddy, like totally blew this away. I was surprised how fast it is. And so you've got, and then so Faculus is their application installer, which is the one click installer for WordPress. So this is how you install Joomla and then Moodle, Moodle and WordPress and all this stuff. They include good version control. They don't make it special. They just say, this is a feature of our site. They have excellent support and they do this. They free website transfer. So they will actually assist you to um, transferring. And interestingly enough, they say a fee may apply if you're old is not cPanel. Why? Because cPanel makes a copy and you can send it to these guys and they will install it using their cPanel. It's not cPanel, they're going to charge you for it because it's going to be a shit show. So, you know, I, I like these guys because they free, you know, they got a free SSL certificate. They, they, they're they doing things kind of upfront, right? They don't screw around. They just basically tell you, look, you're paying based on how many cores, half a core, one one core, one gig, two, and, and cloud. It's not unlimited. It's, it's available. It's not unlimited. It's SSD, so it's fast. Bandwidth is not unlimited. You're not going to run Amazon.com on this thing, but you've got a very straightforward pricing, and 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 I've had several clients not move to it, and they love it. So you know, that's my little rant. There's hundreds of other hosts you can check them out. All right, folks, we went on uh, uh, 40 minutes over, but I thought that was useful for Natalie. Um, yeah, Natalie, and MVD hosting is okay to use them, but check out some other ones. Yeah, like, I like MVD. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a great session, Alex. Thank you. Nice to meet you guys. Um, really appreciate this. Yeah. Hey, ciao, guys. Yeah. Thanks to everyone. It's a little bit longer than usual, but I thought that was great. And I'm glad Natalie got her up and so did everyone else. We still have six people on the call, so I must not be boring everyone. <laughs> <laughs> right. Bye, everybody. Have a good evening. Ciao. Bye. Thank you. Yeah.